好的机会。很简单，对。就算点有点不准啊，这个六号球还能在这儿给你校正一下。对。啊，应该是这样进选择的。好球！了，二号传进九号，这样雷耶斯啊也是非常轻松的赢得了第九局的胜利。现在比分是变成了六比三。<笑>看来老将啊有实力，而且还有运气。嗯。现在。That we practice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, stuff like that will be. You know, it, it, it's so entertaining. We're gonna it's have so to get a replay on that shot. <laughs> We're gonna have to get a replay on that. Moved around a little bit, but then he got down. He didn't shoot his natural rhythm. He took. Two, he got down. He took too much.
Hello. Hello. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. Did not realize that my, uh, somehow my microphone got set to the wrong channel. Well, yeah. But welcome. Welcome, everybody. I'm, uh, John Absher, the host. And, uh, Michael Rollator joining us right now. Coming in. Coming in hot. Hello, folks. You got a race to 25. A race to 25. Is this the first game we started? First game, just started. Oh, and we're on an eyeball. Already on the eyeball. Wow. They had one two, one miss piece. Or now two, two to one miss. And we're missing one little crucial information from the players. Oh, yeah? I don't know the rules. We don't know rules. <laughs> I don't know which rules they're doing. Okay. Apparently, it wasn't in the group chat. <laughs> so maybe they discussed it between themselves. Well, I'm pretty sure that's going to end the game right there. I think whatever rules are in play. Do not just this, this. This will be the last shot of the game. I fixed this earlier, and I uh, kind of bounced back. Wait, so we get that camera going. All right. Well, we come in. Ah, Jamie, uh, you want first blood? How's it going, Michael? How are you? How you doing? Too bad. Mr. Rollator, how's your week been, sir? It has been doing all right. It's been a fun week. It's been, been a week. It's been a week? It's been, it's, well, it's been a week. Good week or a bad week? It's just a week. Just a week. That's good. Had a long-ass week. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, jeez. Traveling all over the damn place. I think we're half of Florida, most of Alabama this week. <laughs> so that means you uh, didn't get like Birmingham to see the uh, the women's tournament today, did you? I did not. Did you go out there? No, no, no. Nick DeQ said heads. Nick DeQ said He's calling you out. He's calling something out. Something about rolled. What is he? Uh, rolled gold? Is that? Is he calling out pretzels? No, I think is that, was that is that pretzel that he's calling? Just going head. Oh. Hey Nick, how you doing today? You got any predictions for this? Uh well this is a this is a rematch, right? This is a little this is not a rematch from last year. This is a rematch from last year, yes. Last time they raised two fifteen, I believe Jamie won. I'd have to look back to be hundred percent that. Hmm. There we got a couple of likes. Appreciate the likes, guys. Yeah. And also, welcome, Nick. Good to see you, man. I haven't seen you in a while. Wow. I never, uh, I don't think I've ever heard of a 
you know, full player full players are saying that they still need a seven out. You know, I'm sure. Uh, Speaking about that, I would also appreciate the seven out. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Uh, Shane. I don't think Shane would. He'd be like, you know, I don't need it. <laughs> Keep it. So we've seen some interesting things the past couple of weeks, though. Yeah. Mike Siegel coming in hot after the Masconi Cup. Mm. Did you see all those comments? Uh, yeah, he was uh, giving his input on things that he would probably like with change and change around and you know, I mean obviously there needs to be a change uh -huh. but uh, needs to be something that was bad like, uh, no offense to the American players it was just bad sounds like uh, sounds like a pretty judgmental of the American players uh, maybe <laughs> maybe and uh, I'm not trying to take anything away from it. it's a hard game man oh that is one thing hard I game and it's it's rough and it can all depend on a lot of roles but Jack Bergner, in a completely unbiased comment, had the observation that they're both playing with Bricky Shafts. Huh? Nice. How about that? <laughs> good, good, good pickup, Jack. I mean, you, you must have a keen eye for things like that. <laughs> <laughs> sure, they're very well playing. They seem to be, uh, well, that one drove the pretty well. Yeah, he got probably, a good line on it. Yeah, he did. <laughs> You know how long, they, don't roll by you know how long they've been here warming up? Uh, Time to get used to the table yet? Jamie's been here for about 45 minutes. And uh, Benny's been here for maybe like 15. Okay. So they've had a little time to warm up. Okay. Yeah. I think Benny shot the last like 15 <clears throat> minutes, so. Jamie seems like he's playing pretty good today. Mm, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really get to see Benny shoot too much because I was uh, doing other things, but okay, it'll be interesting. Ah, there you go. Yeah, it was Hill Hill last time, and Benny won. Now, did they play nine ball last time, or they played eight ball last time? Nine ball, nine ball. race okay. to fifteen. So they said that race of fifteen doesn't tell us anything. Let's make it a real race. Let's make it a real race. Go Let's 25. Yeah. Let's go to 100. <laughs> to the moon. Going to the moon this time, boys. So what do you think about uh, Mike Siegel's words? Out of curiosity. Um, I didn't really pay a lot of attention to it. Uh, it just came off as a, you know, come let me be captain and let's see what happens. So, do you think that'd be a good idea? He well, seems to be a pretty business savvy guy. Yeah, I mean, well, clearly he knows the game. He understands the game. Um, he understands what it's like to compete at a really high level. You know, that's the one player that actually even Efren said that like he idolized was uh, Mike Siegel. Yeah, if you ever watched some of the old AccuStats for Mike Siegel, oh Mike god, Siegel, yeah. oh, he was a fantastic player. Yeah, yeah. By the way, um, you guys out there, what do we got? Few people out there, if you guys can uh, let me know, is my volume all right? Does that seem high? Do I seem low? Yeah, think about that though. That's that's pretty crazy. Like the one player that everybody kind of considers to be the number one in the world for like the longest time, you know, Efren Reyes. Like he considers Mike Siegel really like well the, one of the greatest players of all times and somebody that he idolizes. Right. I mean, I can't. I can't put any more words than that in his mouth. So. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's, yeah, it's interesting because I, I, I've always wondered what kind of exposure Filipinos had to, you know, especially before the internet. So if you go back in the 90s when Efren was getting around, you know, how much did he know about, you know, other, other cool environments? Now, of course, there's Filipinos that lived in the U.S. They kept in contact. They would, you know, call each other up. And, so that it's not like they were completely sheltered, but I always wondered, you know, how much they really saw, especially earlier on in the 80s. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, because Efren was in the U.S. for a pretty long time, right? Um, yeah, I don't know exactly when he got here. But, uh, 
I want to say that he got here in like the late 70s, early 80s. Because uh, I, I want to say that there were some American gamblers that paid for him to come over, like his original backers. Yeah, I th well, yeah, I don't, I really don't know. I mean, like I said, I know there's always been a, a Filipino presence, especially in the uh, in the west side, west coast. Well, not just the west coast, but the western U.S. Yeah, he originally started so, playing in like Arizona or something, right? Um, I'm not exactly sure where he started. I mean, but like I said, it's it's. I always do wonder though, because I mean, now with the internet, people can see what everybody's doing all over the place. Yeah. Big but, difference. It's hard to be a unknown anymore. Oh yeah. Looks like Jamie takes a push. Yeah, Jamie's pushing out there. So what? What's you? What do you? What do you have any predictions? Hmm. I think uh, we'll probably see another close race again. I think it's gonna be tight. I think it's gonna be tight. And I, I really like the my my biggest issue is I just don't really know the players that well, right? So I don't really know uh, like best like I don't know the speed to really judge a match now. Yeah, I, it's what that's actually one thing I like about these streams is when you have people that you really aren't familiar with you're watching, and at that point you can sort you know you, you don't come in with this this idea of what to expect from them, and so you could just sort of watch how they play. You know, you look at their stance, look at their setup, they get down on the ball, but he gets down really well. His body is pretty still through most of the shot. He uh, kind of rushed that one a little bit. But I mean, both both these players are obviously adequately you know, able to play. So just out of curiosity, what do, you, what do you consider as rushing a shot? There's a certain pace that seems natural. I mean... Certain people play faster than others, so that's not what I'm saying compared to what their normal speed. So if it looks like maybe they've um, sort of taken a shortcut on a certain execution of the shots, maybe they didn't take that extra warm-up stroke, or maybe they went a little bit faster on their backstroke or forward stroke than they usually do, or it's much more calm, much more even. That's what I mean by rushing it. Um, they, they did something where they're sort of shortcutting their the process. That a lot of times just happens if you're uncomfortable with a shot. How many shots do you think you have to watch where you really know somebody's kind of getting uncomfortable? With I, I think uh, and, and for players like these guys, not that many. And you can sort of see what they're doing. Uh, Betty sort of has a two-stroke. He goes kind of long. You know, before he actually executes the shots. You can, I mean, like here, if you watch how he just looks at the table, he sort of visualizes it. He gets down. He's had, does a couple of strokes. He has that pause. You know, I would like to see him sort of slow down the, the backstroke a little bit just to help him relax because he seems like it's sort of uh, going back and forth quick, which is, of course, making your muscles tighter. And it takes a, it takes a lot of uh, having that really smooth stroke. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, though, because I've seen some, like, even higher, pretty high-level players that seem like they play, like, like they they're, the way their muscles move, they look like they play stiff. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, there's some players I couldn't really name too many off the top. Now, you know, if you watch old, uh, some, some of the old videos with Joe Rogan when he was playing pool, he always, to me, looks really stiff, but he also looks like he's controlled. But, um, you know, I just, I don't know. I think his ability, because who he was playing with, got so fast, but I don't know if he's ever gotten really comfortable. I mean, at this point, he might be. Yeah. But I'm just basing this on old videos I saw of. Him shooting, he always looks stiff. Well, I think that uh, a lot of the European players, like to me, a lot of the European players kind of look a little stiff when they're shooting. Mm. Really? Yeah. Like they like they don't look, I guess like when I compare those things, I think about Filipino players because Filipino players normally look really loose. Well. And then like you look at European players and they just look a little bit more like tight and a little bit more stiff when they're shooting. And mm -hmm. their, uh, their strokes are not like out as far like their bridge is not out as far and things like that i think i think a lot of the way the filipinos especially you take some like efren or Lucy, especially the older oh yeah de definitely the older pool their player, their right? warm-ups were just very elaborate very loose um or that the 
a lot of the players, they don't have that very exaggerated... I mean, it's almost... It's like, if you watch Afro, it's, it looks like his arm's just on a rubber band. Oh, God, no. And it's just going, but and it's... he's always almost, aiming, so, and then all of a sudden, it's like, ah, top right. And you're like, what the... Where did that come from? <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, Rodney Sullivan is... is yeah, precision is probably the best way I would ever describe Roddy Sullivan. Oh, so, yeah, for sure. He is ridiculously precise. You've got to be with that game, though. Well, yeah. But you have to just keep in mind that there's a difference between the weight and the size of the balls between pool and snooker. Um, yeah, with snooker, you don't, you're never really... I mean, occasionally you have to stroke a ball in snooker, but even then, it doesn't require, like, an effort stroke. Mm -mm. You know, that effort stroke, if he's doing something just crazy with the ball, I mean, you so, because the balls are just heavier, the bigger, and so it's just the way they play. I think it's, but, I think a lot of that depends on the equipment that people start playing on and how good they get on the original oh, equipment. Because, absolutely. like, if you're using really shitty balls for like the first 10 years that you play and a really shitty table, you're going to get a lot of like times where you have to break out. Like quite a bit of balls, and you really got to learn to control your cue oh, ball yeah. to get this breakout. Yeah, and you. And have I think to that's learn. where the whole lot of that comes from. Right. I mean, the the ball in the nine, and he nailed it. Damn, he did that know that. Great, great shot. shot. I mean, it's not just. I mean, yeah, you have shitty balls, you got shitty equipment, you have shitty cloth, but you also have conditions like humidity, heat, playing outside, balls, outside, <laughs> the dirt involved. I mean. You know, all that stuff is going to come into play. And if you're a raised and environment and you've got to stroke a ball, True. you're going to develop a stroke. It's, it's a, you know, it's, that might be sort of the reasons why they're still excelling and maybe why the U.S. does excel as much. They play on such nice equipment. Speaking of, how do you feel about uh, Europeans playing against the Filipinos in a Masconi Cup style tournament? I like it. I like it too. I like it. I'm actually. Actually, the one I'm more excited about is I want to see the Chinese players play against the, the uh, Europeans. Yeah. I would rather see that than the Filipinos, to be honest. Because mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a lot of very good Chinese players. And honestly, I find the Chinese style, uh, like this style that they use, pretty similar to the European style. Mm -hmm. So I think it'll be much more interesting. So I can't, you know, I'm, a swim. I'm thinking that maybe if you uh, had a Moscone Cup, the three sort of three different regions and somebody had to sit out every year whoever lost had to sit out it's almost <laughs> like it's it's like uh with uh with soccer with european soccer you know if a team you know they're in the premier league but if they don't do well they get knocked down to the lower league do they really yes i didn't know that. that's funny <laughs> somebody from lower league gets pulled back up who's excelled and so you have this incentive to really perform or you're just going to get demoted. And so maybe that's what has to happen. I mean, America maybe just has to get demoted to get their, their butts in gear, get them revved up and ready to play. What do you think would really... Uh, skill level-wise, I think they're both eights. I believe, APA-wise, in nine ball. I believe so. Not 100% sure. Hmm. I was not involved much in, uh, in the uh, matchmaking process on this one. Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Maybe uh, maybe our production team give a little insight into their levels. Yeah, maybe if they're in the background listening. <laughs> Sean, Sean is wondering what's happened to the launching pad. Uh, it's in the pocket. Players choosing not to use it. Yeah, we I mean, you know like we we switch out the cloth cloth every year, so I, I, I'm not too concerned if people don't use the breaking cloth. To be honest with you, like it's kind of nice, you know, not having the dents on the table. I mean, I think it does it's make huge. it. It's, it, I don't. Yeah, I don't think it's. I mean, sure, certainly in a match like this, if they don't use it, it's not going to cause. Yeah, for sure. Damage. You're not going to notice it. It's, it's just over time. But, um, but I mean, I, I kind of like it just because it does it, over the long term. It does. Yeah, it keeps you from getting a. Longer. But I mean, you're still going to get like the skip streak, mm -hmm. you know, and like you're still going to get like spots from where the head ball sits and stuff. Like you're never going to. Oh, yeah, there's definitely going to be... Yeah, you're never going to fully be able to, like, protect a table. So, well, no, like, no. To me, like, I'm not even really that big of a fan of the break cloth. Yeah. But that's just my personal opinion. It To me, it's also how people break. Um, 
you know, there's there's certain people, the way they break, and I don't want to, you know, name any, you know, Richard Rice or anything like that, but <laughs> who has a tendency that they really shoot downwards on the break and really push into the cloth to get at that that jump, that little hop off of it, so you get that snap into the ball. Get that little nice pop. That pop into it. And if you put it on the same spot every time, it will develop a hole. Yeah. Because I mean, you're burning the cloth, you're tearing the fibers. And so at some point, so the point, if you're going to do that, yeah, it move digs. it around a little bit. It don't digs hit the, down. Yeah. It digs down. Into don't it. hit the exact same spot every time. Oof. That's going to. That's a it. good couple of shots to get on that five ball. But I don't even know if he can make it. Uh, what do you think? I think, think, I think it might slide in. What do you think the American team needs, though, to get their asses in gear? Um, honestly, it's just it's going to be coming come down to work ethics. You think so? Yes, it's it's, it's work ethics to um, just the way they look at the game, the way you know, it's. I, I think I, I think it's it's really good that's happened. Because in the U.S., people have just sort of accepted where they are. You know, in the hierarchy, you get these pros who are like, all right. You know, but they don't, you know, they're, they're content. They, they, they have not a great life, but they have a, a life that they're having fun and they're surviving. You know. That, that's another thing that i got to ask you a question What's about. That? The incentives. Don't you think the incentives matter when it comes to... Like, to me, I don't think we've seen... The best pool players we could oh. possibly have. Oh, that's just bad luck. That's so that's rough. That is really rough. But to me, I don't think that we've seen like the best people that could really be at pool because I don't think the incentives are there for them to like want to go play pool. You know, like they feel like, oh, why would I want to do that? Because I'm not going to make that much money, so I'll just go do like something else. <laughs> uh, we have a uh, Kevin O'Neill over there. He's uh, doing some live. Live audience hanging in there. And in fact, Kevin could have given us an update on rules. Yeah, Kevin might be matching other rules down there. Kane Martin said the Europeans work out, play Euro Tour, have structure and practice routine. USA wing it. Uh, pure talent mostly in bar bar tournaments. Um, I'd agree with most of that. I'm not sure about bars and bar tournaments, I don't think... I mean, when you're talking about the top, top elites, I don't think they're doing a lot of bar stuff. I mean, they're certainly doing tournaments. Well, I mean, some of them um, are. But yeah, and again, We know at least two are. <laughs> and, and, and it's interesting, because... Now, this is a conversation I would like to see if he might wants to get involved in, is how much does gambling help or hurt um, the getting people to be improving their game? I, I think it helps. Okay, I'm on. I'm on that camp. I I think that if you're learning and you need to test yourself and you need the pressure and you enjoy the pressure of doing it, that's that I completely understand. I'm thinking more to reach the elite level. How many people, when they gamble, if they're gambling, are they gambling so that they can eat? Are they gambling because they like the rush of winning the money? Because at that point. Is the incentive to get better, or is the incentive to be able to out gamble your opponents, maximize and make them the money? amount of money that you can make? Right. Yeah, I think I think that you missed a category though. I think that there are some people that want to gamble because they want the pressure, right? And like that's no, that's no, I, the I way they learn. Yeah, right. I understand that, but I'm talking about when we're talking about the the Moscone Cup players, yeah. the people at the top top, the point oh one percent of the pool players in the U.S. Is I mean, is gambling or learning to play by gambling the better option, or is having more of a structure, having a team? I mean, that's the other thing. Europeans have teams; they fly together, they work out. I mean, they practice together, they help each other out. There's, I mean, I I don't know of any real. I mean, you have a few people that might work with somebody else. I mean, you would have had like Johnny Archer he used to work with Michael Coltrane, stuff like that. What a shot! But as far as having a group, that was a great. That was a great shot. <laughs> I think I think it's a little bit of both, but I, I I think that if you're gonna purely not gamble, I think that it's important to have 
setting that puts you under pressure because if you are not under pressure on a regular basis i think that when you are under pressure you're going to have a very hard time on it right well that that brings up another question it's how many people can practice while still putting pressure on themselves while they're practicing get their mind in, in that mode that and that and that's kind of my point though is like i don't think that most people can I think well, it's I like an almost impossible I don't, thing. Like I'm agree that most people don't. The question is, can you do it? Can you train yourself to do it? Is a question. I don't. I don't think you can. So I, I believe. I do believe you can. I think that if you can sort of, I mean, you can convince yourself of all sorts of things that just aren't, you know, supporting the reality. You hypnotize yourself you before hypnotize, you get on the pool table. But you could. I mean, you can convince yourself. I mean, you you get. You can convince, there's people, you can get on the internet and you can find out, I mean, people call themselves a nine. Yeah. Who maybe out of a hundred. But. Or, or call yeah. you out while you're selling a expensive pool cue. <laughs> offering to gamble you. So, you know, I mean, you can convince yourself. Experience. No, I mean, but in all seriousness, I think, I think you can train your brain that every shot is so important. That every, you get this mindset that if you miss a shot, even by yourself, you lose. Um, I, I think that is true, but I think that the pressure that you feel during that and the pressure that you feel of uh, possibly letting your teammates down, I think is two different types of pressure. I mean, well, yeah. And I, mean, I think that's where the difference comes in. Okay. And I, th I think it's hard, it's hard to recreate that now you think that... I don't think the U.S. has enough pro pro events for pool players that lets them feel that type of pressure. Yeah. Wow, that's that's a conversation that we can have in a few minutes. Yeah, we could have it's that. a whole well, new a, conversation. On that. Oh, that was a good break. He let us get yeah, all set. That's, that's, yeah, and the uh, and like couple balls. First few breaks, they haven't really been able to control the cue ball too good. Uh, but we do have a bit of a cluster by the racking area. <sighs> Put away um, that drink. I just, I, I think the problem when, when a lot of people, and this is, I mean, I think most players... Jeez, I think uh, most the problem with a lot of players, especially when they're practicing, they are they like to be in a comfort area. And if you watch a lot of people that practice on their own, they will practice things that they are pretty good at already. Yeah, that is you true. Know, they'll they'll practice. They'll just throw nine ball drills up, you know, nine ball ghost type drills and practice pattern play. Which don't get me wrong, pra practicing pattern play is great. And what that does when you do that all the time, it makes you really really strong at pattern play, positioning play. But the question is, what's going to happen when the safety start? Yeah. You haven't been practicing your, your kicks. kicks. <laughs> haven't been practicing your kicks. No matter how much practice you get on the other stuff, it doesn't matter. If you don't practice your breaks, if you don't make them all on the break, throw the cue ball, well, I don't know what that pattern is going to help you with while the other guy's running out. I think uh, I think people practice pattern play a little bit wrong a lot of times, I, too. I agree with that, too. Yeah. But I think that's a, another thing. Like I think that people get used to just throwing the balls up. They don't like start from a rack. Right. That's uh, true. I think that uh, they don't look. I think they look at the ball and then the next ball, and they really don't look like more than like two balls ahead majority of the time. Right. Well, I think the other thing is that they don't punish themselves for. Um, they don't punish themselves for messing up. How do you punish yourself? Uh, there's a few ways. You can, if you're playing the ghost, if you miss a shot, you re rack. Um, yeah. If you miss a shot, you re rack. You don't just keep shooting, you don't set up the same shot again. You force yourself to re-rack, which will st give you a little bit of a... Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. That'll, for that'll, sure. that'll get your brain saying, oh, I don't like this. Oh, yeah, there's definitely a big difference between when you're playing the ghost and you're uh, just shooting. Which I, I like just shooting sometimes because it's just relaxing, you know? Oh, well, yeah. Exactly. But that's that goes to back what I was saying. A lot of people... But when they that's not this, necessarily when I'm trying to they, get better. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but a lot of people do that. They like to do something that makes them feel good, that makes them feel like they've achieved it. And that's great. I mean, that's going to be part of the building process. But if you want to improve, you got to make yourself uncomfortable. And I think that's the other thing that gambling does. 
is it puts you in an uncomfortable position. Absolutely. It so does put you, you in a if you can practice and put yourselves in uncomfortable positions, shoot shots are really hard. I mean, shoot shots you have a lot of problems with. Um, you know, if you're playing position play, set up specific shots and get very specific positioning using different routes. Don't just use the same route. Don't just use stun. Try to use other ways. You know, expand your toolkit. But you have to do it where they, you feel like there's some sort of skin in the game instead of just going through the motions. Yeah. I, you know, I've kind of wondered about that before, though. Like, what's the appropriate amount of skin? Like, I don't. I mean, you just like, I don't feel know like. how you can really, like, punish yourself to a point where, like, it's going to make you improve. Um, I, I don't, I mean, I don't know how to describe it other than to say that uh, you just, you just have to do something to the point that when you keep failing, that you're going to get frustrated a little bit. And then the question is, how do you deal with that frustration? Do you get motivated or do you just let it conquer you? You know, I think if you I'm get gonna... motivated and say, okay, I got this. Yeah. It's, I have to anyway. Um but uh we can see a little bridge work here. Fab is up over Mary Beth. That was a good shot. That yeah, was a good shot. Might have rolled up on the six a little too much though. But it doesn't really matter. So pattern play is basically um, when you're looking at the balls in order or if you're playing eight ball, you come up with a pattern that you want to run out that gives you the easiest run out or most efficient run out. And so you keep seeing the same three or four shots in a row in advance. You understand exactly how to get from one position to the next. Who's asking about pattern play? It was in the chat. Oh, my bad. Very good. So. <laughs> Bring up the... Uh, I'm bringing up my little chat. So I'm feeling is Anna is up right now. Or is she down? I'm gonna Who's Mary Beth? Beth? I don't know who Mary Beth is playing in that tournament. I'll look it up. <laughs> so what do you guys... Uh... By the way, you guys in chat, do you guys know these players pretty well? You guys rooting on anybody? Way a lot to uh, find it's the digital pool. on digital pool. Yeah, we can bring it up. Let's see what we get. Digital. Bridging the gap between players and technology. Well, he made a nice shot on the eight, but he rubbed the nine ball, so he's going to bank it back. A little bit too much. It's a nice stroke, and that ball is going to slide on right it. Out of end. It's a good pace. Picking it back up. If you try to jam that one, that will not fall. Three five. Closing that gap. And he's, Benny's making a little comeback. All right, which ceremony are we talking about? I always like, uh, yeah. So, road players always rooting for the other. Uh, James Tower trying to say rooting for Benny, saying routing. Routing, routing on Benny. Routing on Benny. Let's hope it's not a route <laughs> on Benny. <laughs> Chinese Taipei Open. Carlo Beato, first place. Right, what are we looking at? Is it Twin City Billiards? 
it on the left. Oh, this one? Brackets. Scores. Come on. Dude. So the launching pad did get used, and the launching pad, it, oh, is he going to do a little swipe out, pick it up? Or wait. Pick it up and let it down. Get rid of the launching pad. It's Kevin enforcing. Savannah is up five to two. I don't know who Marybeth is. Is Kevin enforcing the launching pad? I think he is. <laughs> I think I said I don't care, and Kevin's like, nope. Kevin's this. Kind of like, I play on this table too. I want a nice table. <laughs> That's a good shot. That was a really good shot. That was a good shape. It was uh, so yeah. Apple Cut uh, Country had a uh, pretty big field. I can't remember who all it did have a pretty big field. I was one of the one of the underdogs there. There's a lot of. I was one of the contributors for sure. There was uh, what like eleven or twelve people over six hundred Fargo that was there. And half of them were over 650. So, Mary Beth Nix has a Fargo of uh, 527, where Savannah's at 600. So, there was an interesting conversation, if you guys keep up with the Facebooks, the interesting conversation where um, somebody made gave the opinion that women's Fargos do not equate to men's Fargos. Saw that. And uh, you have uh, an opinion on that? What do you think? I think if you, I think if it's a woman that plays in a woman-only league, oh, is he shooting at the wrong ball? Oh no, that's. I think if you play in a yeah, woman's-only league, maybe. But I don't think it equates because all of them get meshed together. All right. Like there's no. I mean, the system doesn't know if you're a guy. I mean, the system knows if you're a guy or a girl just for reporting stats. But when it comes to the algorithm... Yeah, I don't think the algorithm the algorithm differentiates. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't care whether you're, you're a guy or a girl. It's something I think is interesting. That's a good shot. And... I mean, it's... I don't know. From what I've seen, I don't think there's... Any more discrepancy with the women Spargos I have seen with discrepancy in men's Spargos. So there's plenty of guys that has a lot of discrepancies. Yeah, I think we know one. But <laughs> we, we could probably name a few if we had to, if we put a gun to our head. We could probably. A few whose Fargo does not completely align with their, their abilities. Like, well, no, I'm Fargo not, than I'm, me. I'm not, uh, I'm not here to get into that. But it's just uh, that's a good shot. It's yeah, that was a nice little, nice little kissy off the nine, double kiss off the nine to get it straight in. It's convenient. These guys are uh, moving on right along. Mm -hmm. They might hit twenty five. I wonder if these guys are uh, wondering about taking a break. By the way, have you gotten uh, very much feedback? As far as uh, the change we've had, as far as versus the players, uh, the players like like the like having it up here, but I haven't really heard them say that they like it more or not. Okay. So, but they they just said it's nice changes. It was really all mm -hmm. I really heard. I'm sure, like for them, it probably is a little bit better because. At least for us, it's better because now they're not. We don't have to worry about like giving somebody pointers. Right, and, they, and they're not listening to. Or they're trying to shoot a very difficult shot. And then they're like, "That's a good idea. I'm gonna have to change my shot now." Oh no, Joe! You don't get to be on the fence on this one. Got to pick a side. This is America. We don't. We don't give even to anything. You gotta. You gotta go one side or the other. But I think I think who brought up that discussion anyways? I, that was 
Okay. Was it the? I was just talking about more. Was it the person that more. runs the ice, Iron City? Because yeah, the point is the the, the I conversation. Seeing, is valid. Yeah, I saw the conversation. Right. I'm not. I'm not looking to promote, or I don't want to get into a personal. Because that's where this will end up going. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And I'd rather not do that. I just want to get the idea for people who are familiar with Fargo, who plays under Fargo, if they've noticed any actual discrepancies between men and women's Fargos and their abilities. Wow, oh, that was a nice play for that new ball to set. Nice two real kicks, tucks it right behind it. Um, of course, the other bad thing is that at least this area, the North, North Metro Atlanta area, or just Atlanta area in general, there's not a lot of Fargo events, not a lot of Fargo leagues. So it really hasn't caught on around here as much as it has around the other parts of the country. So, oh, that's a nice little safe. Tucks it. It's a pretty firm, though. It's going to come right back out. Yeah, definitely came out. That was a nice, a great idea. That was a really nice idea. He just hit it a lot harder than he needed to. Yeah, I think I, I agree with that, Joe. Um, especially a lot of people who never really get out. Only partially, though. Well, because if a player that you guys have at your location plays at other places, well, that's then the all point. the other players that play against him actually gets rated into your Fargo. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, it's a, little a, little. Effect, a little bit. It's it's definitely better for more people to get out and play different people. It's more accurate different. than APA. Well, <laughs> that's that's. <laughs> That's a completely different algorithm, um, but yeah, I mean, if you're if you're basically playing pool on an island, then yeah, that's going to be a lot more limited to give an idea on how things are. But I mean, even just getting out to play, if you go once a year, if you play a BCA league, you go once a year to Vegas, and you play enough matches out there, that will start getting you a little bit more where you should be. Um, now, of course, the difference is. The big difference is looking at the fact that people that play on nine foots all the time, and they go to seven foots versus people that play seven foots all the time. Well, that's a big difference. So, you know, some people that are used to playing on nine foot tables, they're just going to see every shot as an easy shot. They may have more confidence on the seven foot table and play at a higher level than they do on the nine foot table. And again, a lot of people on nine foot tables don't know how to adjust for the speed or the rails. So or breaking out, out. Or breaking out, or dealing with clusters. Dealing with so, clusters is definitely different. That's that's a, one of the things about the Fargo that I'm really not sure, because it's based on your eight ball game, your nine ball game, your ten ball game. Yeah. Um, and those, I mean, nine ball and eight ball are so different games to give the same ratings on those games doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Because some people are really good at eight ball, at the tactical side of eight ball, but for them to play three row shape to avoid a lot of things doesn't come up in not eight ball very often at all. You know, you're usually playing simpler shapes, simpler patterns than nine ball requires. But then again, a lot of nine ball players aren't going to be used to having to deal with the clusters. Um, yeah, if they're, different, and, they're two and, different games. Oh, yeah. Sure. yeah. So to have the same rating for, you know, being affected by both games, it's, it's, that's that's one of the flaws I see. I won't say flaws, but it's one of the limitations that Fargo presents. And so from that, looking at eight, eight nine-footers and seven-footers also kind of limits. You know, especially if you have, what you know, what traditionally would be like high B players. High B players on... A sub foot table playing rotation, playing nine ball, you should expect them to break and run a lot of racks. Where they may not be breaking and running that many racks on nine, nope. nine foot table. The one thing I did realize was with the old BCA, where you would go would depend on what they would actually rank uh, players as. Like B players were different in different locations, and then you'd have the A players. Well, that's true. And then the master and the grandmaster. Yeah. So, like, some B players were. Seem like grandmasters or masters. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, 
from in Atlanta, I've always noticed Atlanta had sort of the lower side of it. Um, where that, you know, maybe Atlanta, I might be considered a mid to upper C player, where somewhere else I might be considered a strong B player. Yeah, see, in Portland, they didn't even have C players. They didn't exist. They didn't exist. They, they only had a B, A, Master, Grandmaster, and that was it. No. Oh. So as soon as you get on the table, you're already you're, – you're, everybody's born on second base, huh? Everybody's born on second base. <laughs> and then they brought out a, they brought out Fargo Rate, though, while I was there. Read player, which isn't a good basis. I agree. We all should travel. Right. Some for many reasons, that, even though that that I definitely do agree with Joe. I, I would love to see more round robin events, so you're really getting a good idea of how you are with the with the whole field versus whichever lucky part of a bracket you got it to. Think that, big that I think that's the only place that does round robin around here. Um, yeah, I think so, but I think um, I mean it's it's you know like robustness is a good indicator on how much you play and how. How many games you've gotten in? Um, it would be interesting to see if there was another stat about. Um, it'd be a nice to see if you had another stat for how many different players you've played. So you may have a you know a score of twenty versus scored one hundred twenty. So somebody with one hundred twenty obviously had a wider you know, number of unique players they've played. And that'll give you a better idea. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, if you're playing the same 20 people in league all year long, that's not a good sample size. That was what, like, that's the way it was when Fargo Rate first came out, too. And then they started having, well, they've been having us for a long time, but when they had the BCA Open that was, like, on the coast, mm -hmm. is what they call it. They had, like, a big BCA tournament, kind of like Vegas, but it was in a... Like over in uh, on the coast in Oregon, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a lot more people that came out of that one. Right. I mean, there's you know BCA is a lot bigger in certain other states. I mean, there's uh, I believe is it Ohio? Ohio is a Ohio State championship, which is basically a BCA format tournament. Is it? Yeah. I mean, there's things that had there's places. I mean, Florida has their Florida State tournament. Georgia, I think they tried to. I don't know. Georgia's weird when it comes to pool. For Georgia's got a lot of gamblers. Well, they do have gamblers. They have a lot of gamblers compared to a lot of places. But Florida's got a lot of gamblers. Florida's well, yeah. got a good ton of gamblers. But, yeah, I mean, there's there's a Florida That's a really good shot. I mean, matter of fact, there's a few, quite a few tournaments. I mean, you have the, the West Coast Challenge in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not really a Florida State tournament but as far as, like, but find out who the best person in the state is. Which I still think is funny because you'll have a Florida State tournament that's open to anybody. So you'll get people from outside the state winning the Florida State tournament. But that's fine. I mean, that's that's that's, that's what they want. That's great. Yeah, um, they have the amateur pool uh, open there, too, which is kind of nice. I did the APA amateur pool open. I mean, the national them. amateurs? I don't look it up. It's, it's some APA, oh, like, amateur is, pool. So uh, that that tournament. that right there, you can see that was the illustration of rushing the shot. He got yeah, down, he was he did, stretched a little bit. He was stretched out, and he did about one and a half throat warm up strokes and just hit the ball. That's just when you're uncomfortable and your body just wants to move on to the next shot. Let's get this over with. I don't like it. So how do you feel about like um, exercise when it comes to pool playing? Uh well, yeah. I mean, that's I mean, that's, that should almost go without saying that. You know, exercises does tremendous balance. I mean, you know, physically, it's you know, you're you're working muscles, you're keeping them loose, you're keeping them active. Um, as far as cardio stuff, you're keeping stamina going. Um, you're getting oxygen to the brain that makes you help you focus better. I mean, you know, there's a reason why most of your the top top level players now have a a workout regimen. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, actually, actually, they're actually treating the game as a athletic sport, which is what it is. Yeah, I think Hoban and his wife actually uh, do a lot of stuff online where they talk about their exercises and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Um, Alex runs every day. Um, 
I think Earl runs every day. Earl's been running every day for a long time. Yeah, I mean, this is just... That's one thing I kind of wonder, though, is, like, is, uh... I wonder if running is the exact way to go, or if there should be, like, uh, different types of workouts that people should do, like, functional-type workouts. Yeah, I think that's... that's, that's once again, I should almost go without saying. Um, I mean, you, you just have to remember that you're not... You're not bodybuilding. You're not. You know, this isn't a weight. This yes. Isn't like football. That, that's and that's that's kind of my point. So, is like, yeah, I mean, you're not what's, doing. What's the right exercise that optimizes your pool game? That that I really, I really, I, I couldn't say. Um, you know, I really, I would definitely say legs is definitely important because you're on your feet, legs for hours at a time to be stable. I'd say if if there's good stabilizing exercises, so doing free weights type stuff that works as stabilizing muscles, that probably does a lot of benefits that most people may not appreciate. Yeah, I don't know. Because, I mean, when you're talking about a stroke you. or you're trying to keep everything relaxed and trying to keep from getting shaky or trying to get little the little muscles locked down. I bet you doing three days a week is like a functional workout, so functional meaning a full body workout. Um, like that would probably help quite a bit because you well, it, get like the smaller muscles in your back, oh, more yeah. stabilized in your chest. I, I think but as you, long as you're right, like doing like bodybuilding exercises, I don't think is really the right way to go. No, no I mean if you're if you're if you're doing deadlifts, <laughs> I just don't see the. Uh, Oh, there. Well, I guess uh, not. I have the break. Does it count? No. It does yeah, count. It does count. They they are are it. Okay. Three to nine. Are they? Jamie's racking, really taking off. Are they here. racking their own? Yes, racking. Okay. Well, this is interesting. They're really taking it off here. Yeah. Now this is uh, interesting. This is this is the part where I would uh, change a rule if I was in this. I mean, this is their rules. This is their game. We have. Nothing to do with their rules. Yeah, we have nothing to do with their rules. We're just here to offer a location to do it. And talk. Streaming about it. And us talk about things that have something to do with the match. Well, sometimes. Like the match. Sometimes. Sometimes. So. <laughs> sometimes we get a little off target. Sorry. You know, so, uh, but yeah. But racking your own and the bottom two counts, that's uh, that's uh, that's where I would sort of change it. Because there's ways of kind of manipulating. I'm not saying that... Uh, if Jamie's doing it, or then he would do it. But like there, that's that was a good wreck. I'm all barely moved. I don't know. Nisi said, "I feel like meditation and breathing would do you better." Oh, meditation, absolutely. Breathing, absolutely. Breathing for sure. But I think like well, if you're doing cardiovascular exercises or, or endurance based exercises. Um, I think that your breathing is going to come heavily into play with those. So I think that like a breathing exercise along with that, I don't, I don't think is like super beneficial. I think, I, I think physically the meditation, the breathing, which she's talking about, isn't going to make the difference. I think that's more of the mental side that, you know, when you get a lot of pressure on you, when you have the adrenaline going, when you're in a high stakes game. Oh, for sure. Everything's yeah. happening. That. Yeah. That's when the meditation and breathing is going to pay off. So if you can learn breathing exercises to help you relax, um, and start getting your mind in the middle states where it gets to that sort of zen type level, so you can just get down and just watch the game happen in front of you, then yes, I mean that's and that's, that's and that actually raises a good point. That's probably a, an aspect that a lot of people don't put enough into their game. They don't focus on the meditation side of it. They don't really learn to get themselves at that sort of mental level. Of just... I, I think that, like, if you want to think about it like that, though, you really have to think about the diet and nutrition that you're doing then, too. Oh, well, yeah, that's... Yeah, because, like, you, like, you're not going to be able to really concentrate very well if you're, you know, eating nothing but, you know, sugary stuff. Like, there's a lot of good case studies that shows that Basically, people's ADHD really flare, flares up when you eat like a lot of uh, high glycemic carbohydrates and things like that, which can kind of throw your brain. It also, I think it also shows that, uh, you know, what it, like your paranoia levels kind of go up a little bit when you eat like a lot of carbohydrate. Well, or, well, high glycemic carbohydrates, not necessarily like brown rice or sweet potatoes, but more like sugars and 
you know, bread, things like that. Well, at a very simplified level, don't eat a heavy carb meal right before your match. <laughs> don't do that. So a lot of players that's going to be, that's going to be a bad. Well, a lot, a lot of players will actually tell you this. Don't don't eat during while you're playing pool. Like right. every once in a while, they'll have chewing gum or something like that. Right. But that's about it. Yeah, but don't don't eat anything that's got a lot of bread. Don't put don't eat anything that's going to make you want to go into a food coma. It make you make you uh, shake too. Well, you'll make your hands shake and stuff. I think like I think stuff like stair steppers, like uh, doing like a moderate arm back and well, chest a exercise. Fancy be, three rail shot on the eight ball. That was pretty fancy. But I think doing like some moderate exercises, I think that would definitely help. Oh, Randy, I didn't mean to ignore thing, man. I mean, any anything that you do that gets your mind in a sort of a happy place, nice, relaxed place will definitely uh, pay off dividends. Three to ten. Uh, Randy said, "Running and core strength imperative. Running controls your heart rate in high pressure situations. Core strength keeps you." Still with less effort. Yeah, that's for sure. That's, a lot of exercises. That's also, that's also what I was talking about as far as the stabilizing muscles. So that they, they'll they help you keep still also. Yeah. There's different... Nowadays, too, there's different exercises that people do for uh, stabilizing muscles. Just because it's a different type of muscle fiber mm -hmm. than uh, like you would normally work out doing like strength training. Right. So, well, they're like interesting things. But, I mean, it's it's the difference between, say, um, doing barbells, where you wait for you barbells, where not only are you pushing them up, but you're also keeping it from going one way or oh, the other. Oh, for sure. Versus yeah. the machine, that you don't have to worry about it coming off balance, kind of like, you know, and, and ruining your day. People's... Um People's bodies, though, are a little bit different when it comes to barbells. Like, uh, some people have, well, not with barbells in specific, but with the, just their muscle fibers. Like, some people just have a lot more of those, like, stabilizing muscle fibers than uh, other people do. You almost made that. It was pretty good. By the way, thanks, Ray Ray, for sharing. You guys, don't forget to share these uh, these videos. Yeah, we need to uh, give the players their due. Jamie is uh, Jamie is kind of let things sort of run away with things right now. Get Benny, get Benny on the field yeah, Jamie, here. Jamie's shooting pretty good though. He Jamie is shooting really pretty well. Let's see Benny pick it up and let's make this thing a tight, tight match. Oops. Here, caught on the corner. Caught himself on the corner a little bit. <laughs> uh, black belt required. It's funny you would have loved the uh, the old pool room in Marietta. Uh, oh, the gym, the one that was connected to the yeah. Gym. He had the gym right next to the pool room. I mean, you can go. I would have liked that. Oh yeah, you could have gone worked out, take a shower, go straight to a pool room. I don't know, fucking go to a pool room and go straight to work out, take a shower, do whatever. It's, those of them are open twenty four seven. Ah, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, you missed out the good times like that. Wondering why that thing shut down. It was too good. <laughs> it was non-smoking. It was clean. It's, it's something that didn't survive back in the uh, back in the nineties. <laughs> uh, I think I think a lot of it had to do like a lot of uh, a lot of pool rooms that who's the owners. Are a lot more about the action, a lot more about the gambling, and sometimes they sort of gamble the business away. Oh, he was really trying to go all the way around the world to get back up at night, and instead it a little flat. He didn't get around, and he missed a shot. So. Is he said that's, Fortunately, that's my dream house. <laughs> yeah, 
and a nice little lead zone, even if you bank it. Okay, so he's going long and trying to get three rounds, but the problem with that is that it looks like he sells out and if you miss. I think I would have liked just banking two rounds and leaving cube on the top table. I mean, you'd leave a chance to make a carom into the not or make a billiard into the nine ball and win, but. I agree, Kane. More tournaments would be good. More big tournaments. If, uh, you know, if Red Player had, like, enough publicity, like, and if we had, like, enough time to really do it, like, I wouldn't mind putting on tournaments. It's just, like, uh, you know. Oh! Uh, that was a good shot. Nice shot. You just gotta get down yeah. the ball just a little bit more. Just get past that pocket. Got to come front, back down. Will be concession on this game. But yeah, if we had enough publicity and things like that, I would love to put on some tournaments like that. Yeah. Make Michael run them. Problem is, it's like, it's kind of weirdly hard to talk like bars into adding enough money to draw enough people out. Well, that's the thing. I mean, when Kane's talking about major tournaments, I'm assuming that you're talking about like the type of tournaments they have a hard time, things like that, that will... Uh, require lots of money so you need sponsorship you know you can't you can't expect a pool room to put in all the money for it because they're i mean that's a losing proposition pool room will never ever ever uh yeah the pool rooms will never make money off of it and after a while you just think that the headache of it the stress the work the extra hours the stress you're putting on your employees just isn't worth it I think so. I think some pool rooms make quite a bit of money off. They make quite a bit of money off of medium tournaments, not higher level tournaments. So the guy you really just gotta have the sponsors. Well, yeah. I mean, if you get sponsorships, and well, once again, you have to have reason for people to go watch the tournaments too. It's nice to have tournaments playing. You've got to have an audience that's going to buy products that the advertisers want you to. to sponsors want you to buy and so if you don't have that's that's one of the biggest difference i think between pool and golf golf gives this nice scene that's beautiful to be out there if you look at the golf course it's just beautiful the players are dressed up nice they're well behaved most part um you do have an outlier you know you have uh you know the occasional oh what's his name John Daly. Just John Daly, which is wonderful to have out there, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. You, know, you got to have somebody. People that, come out just to watch him to play. Watch him. But, hey, I can drink that way and play golf, too. But, <laughs> um, but no, I mean, but you, it, there's a certain majesty. Smoke that, cigarettes that every shot. You know, there's a, certain, there's a certain, I don't know how to say it, other than it's, it's, it's sort of a very civilized type thing. But uh, pool still in the U.S. is more of the oh. not the, the it's like uh, it's like um, what Joe was saying that it's the gambling. It's more about the action. It's about the money. It's not so much about the pool, you know. And I get I get that that culture. I understand it, and I don't have a problem with it. But it's going to be a trade-off, and that's what people don't seem to understand, is that you can't have that culture and have the kind of major tournaments that people would like to see. You're going to have to trade a little bit off one oh, or the other. Oh, there's definitely had to be some trade-off. Yeah. yeah. And so... I think you can have both. You just... There has to you, be some You can have both. And golf... I mean, golf, golf has is the same way. tremendous more gambling. A lot more action than pool ever. You have business guys that are always on the golf course too. Go go out on the golf course with a fun group of Asian guys. You'll see what gambling <laughs> looks like. They make they make the biggest ga pool gamblers look like nits. <laughs> so, um, but it's just it's still this air of they're not know, wanting to play safety here, are they? No, they, these guys are aiming <laughs> to get it. Yeah. I believe I would have shot a safety on that, no matter what. 
but uh, I mean, it is. I mean, I think it's it is wrong sort of to compare golf to pool because it's it is very very different. But the history is different. Everything's different about it. But at the same time, um, I think I think at one time though the American pool scene did have like. Uh, you know, really nice dressed up people oh, playing did. and everything like that. And they had the right direction to go in and mm-hmm. then kind of went downhill after a certain casino match uh, that had like six people in it. And certain people started throwing off. By the way, Jerry, I'm as much of a Savannah fan as anybody else. been watching her for quite a few years, but uh, yeah, she's definitely the, the large favorite to win that match. The next round will be interesting. Who should play next? I don't know. Yeah, the yeah, bracket. Mm-hmm. She beat Mary Let's Beth. See if, see if Jamie's going to increase his lead. He does. Oh, Monica Webb's getting beat right now. All right, Benny. Let's let's get this going, Benny. Monica's getting beat by Veronica Menard. From uh, Canada. Yeah, she was Canadian. And there. Um, hey, what? Oh, I guess Savannah hasn't won yet. She's won game. Yeah, she's on the hill. Well, like I said, you're talking about uh, a 600 versus a 527. Yeah, that's going to be that's gonna be a rough match for her. Yeah. Savannah's pretty good, though. She can play it. How old is Savannah? So, I don't know. She's pretty young, right? Yeah, she's young. She is so young that it probably doesn't get talked about. <laughs> so, to give you an idea, on a Fargo race. Oh, a, shit, look where the cue ball's at. In a race to eight. Cue uh, ball sat ball right clock. back on the clock. And a race to eight, you're talking about an eight to five race. So, according to Fargo, if they were playing hot Fargo in a race to eight, it would be double hill right now. So, give Mary Beth props. She's she's playing at her level, at her speed, that keeps it up with it. So, yeah, I give good, good props to stuff like that. Yeah. So, in a medium race, it's an eight to six. I like hot, though. I like hot races really makes the uh, stronger player play harder. So, yeah. Uh, so, Savannah's 14. Okay. That's what I thought. She was like 15 or 14. She was a tiny, tiny girl. She will always be a tiny, tiny girl. She she is having a great time. So, She's having a fun life. So, I got a good story for you. So, before... I, well, before I get oh, yeah, the story... Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um, it's funny because I was talking to a friend of mine and friend brought up a really good question, which when I go to Vegas, I'm probably going to ask. And I'm curious too. It's like, how do these the 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 junior players, you know, what do they do for school? Obviously, Savannah's going to miss probably Thursday, Friday this week at school, maybe Wednesday. So it's, it's kind of a question now. What do the juniors do, you know, to keep their education? I, some colleges I know offer uh, scholarships for pool. Too. Well, yeah, but that's after juniors. Though. Yeah, yeah, it's after juniors. So Kane says they do a lot of homeschooling. So I'm going to ask Vanna um, more about there what she does. Specifically. I think Gage did homeschooling there for a little bit, didn't he? When he was playing, Gage. Gage was he? Well, when he was doing a lot of tournaments, I think he was doing some homeschooling. Okay. You know, I don't. But that's the thing. I don't know if it's strictly homeschooling or is it they go to school, but they. Uh, um, you're the guest. Somebody would like to see you. So, yeah, I didn't know uh, if it's strictly homeschool or if it's going to regular school, but with the uh, idea that, oh, my goodness, we have a special, special guest coming in this for a few minutes. Oh. Hello, how are you? Good. Lucy is What's going on here? 
well, we got a little pool ball going on. We got uh, Benny, who's looking to turn things around now. Benny has sort of come off to a slow start, where Jamie is just playing really, really well. <laughs> and Savannah has just won, it looks like. Well, like I said, I, given the Fargos, if the Fargos are accurate, that was, uh, you know, Mary Beth put up a great fight for, for her level, you know? Which just tells me she's going to be getting better and better. I'd expect to see that number going up over some time. I don't know, Mary Beth, but um, to get through the uh, to get through the, the the stage one is pretty pretty tough. So I give props to Mary Beth, but. See who Savannah's playing next. Oh, yeah. All right. That's what we need. A knee, we need a Nisi to. Uh, uh oh. Wow, I always come in and somebody starts winning. I know. Nisi is going to be Benny's good luck at this point. So if you're not rooting for Benny, let's see. Randy says. Will never be where golf is as long as professional players are still gambling. Gambling in golf is not publicly announced the way it is pooled. That's very true. true. That's very true. So that will never bring major sponsorships or TV into the game. Sponsors want to sponsor tournaments on TV, not streaming gambling matches. And 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 you have to look through the general public. By the way, Jerry, do you miss the chat where Jerry says hi? It's good to see you. Yeah, I've been talking to Jerry on the well, phone. No, he just said it's nice to see you. Oh, to see you too, yeah. Jerry. <laughs> so, um, no, and that's what's interesting is that people in the pool world or people in the gambling world, they understand what gambling is. People that's not in the pool world like that, they just see gambling as hustling and cheating and conning and, and that. That's insane. Yeah, and that happens a lot. I mean, I see it every night when I go to any pool room. There are people who are hustling. Trying to they're, hustle you, yeah, right? Hustle you. Well, <laughs> I try. They do. I get hustled all the time. I was going to say, can't be hustled. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, but it's, it's just, it's, it's looked at as a, you know, as a lower form of surviving. I mean, you're just, you're, like I said, you're just acting as a con man. You're acting as a thief. And that's how a lot of people look at gambling. And, and as much as I can see it, justifiably so. There's a lot of people who do that. And so... Yeah. And, you know... And you, you look at today's culture. You look at today's cancel culture. <laughs> it what does even cancel culture have to do with gambling? Well, no, I mean, the fact... No, seriously. Well, no, what it does is they say, you know, people will say, oh, I can't believe that you would advertise or you would give money to promote this kind of behavior these people these low lives. oh okay i, I understand and so you're that. so you're basically going to the advertiser and saying hey you know you're you're a scumbag for helping these organizations out we're not going to come do anything that's what i mean by the cancel culture you're not canceling the players oh. you're canceling the sponsors which ones you know essentially yeah. Cancel the players. yeah i can see that it's a very delicate situation to to sponsor that and have gambling going on and all that. And, yeah. But Jerry, Jerry's asking there's, um, how else would pool players make money, right? But that's, uh, that's part of, but that's part of the culture. Well, I, I mean, like. it's, it's, it's funny because, you know, you think about professional baseball when it first started. I mean, they weren't making enough money to survive. They weren't doing it because they wanted to make the money. They were doing it because they loved to play the game. They were really good at it. They usually had jobs also. You know, but money showed up for baseball. I mean, most sports were like that. Most sports started off for that there was no money. Yeah, well, Jerry, that's Philippines is always like the exception which proves the rule. But if you look at the Europeans, the Europeans don't gamble that much. They gamble a little bit. There is some gambling, but it's usually more organized. It's a lot more civilized, if you will. Um, and so you do have... What do you want? Okay. So, um, yeah. 
special team on the uh, We uh we cast the scoreboard on our TV that's in there, so players like Chromecasting it, so we gotta players can see change it around. Yeah. So oh. they can see the chat and it's like stressful all over the place. Stuff. All this technical woo woo stuff going on. Technical woo woo. Yeah, that's all I'm doing in the house is technical woo woo. But, yeah, don't forget, guys, if you want to play, we do have openings for January 26th, February 8th, March 22nd, and April 12th. So, uh, I think we've got something cool planned for March 8th. Did John tell you about that? Uh, we've actually got a ring game that we're getting set up. Ooh, yeah, so big ring game. We're actually good. That's gonna happen. Finally, three years later, it's gonna happen. And it's gonna be it's gonna be a bit different than what people are used to seeing on stream. Yes, it, it'll be. It'll be a bit gonna, yeah, we don't need to talk about how yet. No, no, no. We want, we definitely want to keep it under wraps. Oh, come on, Benny, quit. Quit, Benny. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's one game. I'm still it's, here. It's that's true. Oh. I don't know, Nisi. Maybe the, all the good stuff just robbed off already. Yeah, probably. Nah. Benny's got it. Come on, Benny. Let's go, Benny. Yeah, that was me. I'm always rooting for the underdog. That would... Now I think about it, man, that would be brutal. It's like you're playing a match and you have the TV up there with all the comments. Now you're looking at all the comments and looking at the TV. Uh, work on the focus. Work on. Let's see what Jeff says now. He says, "Imagine any other sport that uh, the players paid to play. Pool badly needs professional reps and management." Ooh, Michael. Wait, if anybody's looking for a pool player um, agent manager, I got you. <laughs> Um, but but it's it's it still comes down to what Randy was on it. Randy. Yeah, Randy was saying what Randy was saying. It's it's all image. It's all, you know. And pool has this nasty, nasty image you know, that people don't want to get behind. Really? Yeah. Like, how do we know this? How do we know this? Yeah. Years of observation, talking. I mean, there was there was sponsors in pool for a little bit. Have you heard of the pickleball situation? What's the pickleball situation? So the pickleball is typically reserved for an older clientele, and uh, recently made a comeback with the kids. Yes. Yes. Could okay. pool do the same? Um. Like make pool cool again? <laughs> no, I mean, it, it it goes to cycles. Um, it gets cool with the kids for doesn't it? It does. Uh, that's that's a it, it's a different. It's a, a lot more nuanced thing at that point because pool is competing with so many different things. Um, what do you mean? Jared, what's MR? MR even says gambling is okay now. What could MR mean? But that's way to go. Okay, Joe, that's what I'm saying. We just need to figure out what's going on with Pickleball. Did they have some sort of PR situation? Is it a TikTok thing? Oh, Matt. Oh, Matt. Okay, that makes sense now that he said that. And we could do that for pool. Um. Big dreams. No? I think you have to go and research why pickleball got so big. Well, that's what look. I've got a whole team here to tell why pickleball got so big. Apparently, yeah, we need we need we need the collective uh, collective knowledge of all you guys chat. And say, hey, what did pickleball? What happened with pickleball? Why did they get so big? So, also a question with that, the the junior situation with the APA thing. I just saw that article yesterday or something. What's that? The APA is canceling all their juniors. Did what they so, say? Why? They didn't say why, but I'm assuming why. <laughs> ah, Sean's got the answer. Marketing. Yeah, but how? 
That's, that's Ooh, true. the kids situation. Hey, and I. Kids situation. Yeah. Well, and, and once again, I mean, you ask people to describe a pool room, most of them are going to start off with smoke. It's a smoky, dark, smoky, seedy, full of really sketchy people. <laughs> you don't see, I mean, you, you got to go look at. Look at a golf tournament. Tell me how many people look sketchy in there. Did you say stretchy sketchy. or sketchy? It's not, no, it's just, it's all image. Okay. Who's my, where's my marketing team? We're going to change the perception of pool today. Maybe tomorrow. I'm a little tired today. But it's funny, Joe, that you say the color money didn't help. Where, <laughs> as far as the image, you're right. It, it, it didn't help the image. But that is, the color of money is the last thing that really made pool look really cool. That was many moons ago. Yeah, I know. How many moons ago? Yeah, that was back in the 80s. <laughs> but if you look at how many pool rooms existed back in the 80s versus now, it's huge. I mean, I would say but it's on scale. What do you mean it's of, huge? It's, there was a lot in the 80s or there's no, a lot? No, tons in the 80s. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, I would say... I would almost say maybe a 10 to 1 or a 15 to 1 difference in the number of pool rooms. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't know that. I mean, you guys tell me. What do you think? Is that about right? Does that seem too high, too low? Like there was 10, for every 10 pool rooms in the 80s, there's only one now? Right. Okay. For every 10 pool rooms that exist in the, in the 80s, it's basically one. Like make it deep? Yeah. Just get a drive-through draw shot. I mean, no, I I mean, give you an example. In Duluth, Georgia, um, suburb outside of Atlanta, for anybody who's listening that's not from Georgia. Um, Duluth, in a small area around the Gwinnett Place Mall, there were four pool rooms within a few miles. Four pool rooms within, and they all... Were success. I mean, they all did fine. Oh man! None of those poor rooms exist now. John was born in the wrong time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Ben. I, I take that way. I take that back. One of the poor rooms is still around in Duluth. I, I stand correct. The Sweetwater is still there. It's been there for a very long time. We've been yeah. there. Yep, yeah, you've been there. So. Story. But you know. Have to share. But yeah. Benny came up. 5.13. Let's go, Benny. Benny. Not that I'm rooting against Jamie. I love Jamie. Jamie's doing fine on Stone right now. <laughs> he's doing perfectly well with what he's doing. Let's, uh... Uh... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, it was just... Oh, Anthony says that there was... So that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but we have to say what, what oh. they're saying so that other people oh, are so just was, listening oh. to the podcast. Oh, that's true. For people who are driving and they're... They don't really want to watch the pool. They just want to listen to us talk about the pool that we're not talking about. Okay, I have personally <laughs> had to go run out to Kroger to get stuff, and I'm like, what's going on with what's the match? I don't know. And I'm like, yeah, that was a great shot. You, what, 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 do you, what do you mean that was a great shot? Oh, you didn't get to see that. Yeah. Oh, I can't see it. That's true. We should mess with those people and say, oh, my, oh, wow. Oh, look at that shot. What? Oh, look at that. That, that was a good timing there. Benny played a uh, two-rail bank of the side, not really on purpose, but fired in. He's calling the nine with a combination. No, he's not. Sorry, I got I got ahead of myself. Oh, Stay, you jinx. I got it. You can't hear us. I know we can be like, oh my goodness, Michael, you jinx. You're terrible. <laughs> okay, wait. Uh, Randy said something. Gambling. Ah, uh, name another sport in America that is known for gambling. Other than poker. Okay, poker. That is successful. Other than poker. Oh, you read ahead. I did read that. But um, um, and but Randy is projecting that uh, poker only became big when the technology exists for computers to see cards, along with oh yeah, that is pretty cool. A lot of like that wasn't. Um, I I would say it wasn't really. I mean, poker. Poker was 
I mean, you could watch the old World Series of Poker back in Minions, where people didn't see the cards, and they had commentary, and you had the old school stuff, and you could only see the hands got popped out. They would describe what's going on. So there's televised poker. Um, it got bigger, yes, once they were able to have cameras, and then you'd have the World Poker Tour. The biggest thing that made it, though, is when an amateur won a national tournament. When the everyday man known as Chris Moneymaker... No way. Yeah. That's really... That's really his name, Chris Moneymaker. Chris Moneymaker won the World Series of Poker, and and this is right when the you know, World Poker Tour was going on the Travel Channel, and people were starting to watch it a little bit, and then when he won it, then everybody's like, oh, I can do this. You know, it's like when... It gave the every man a dream. It did. It did. And then everybody's like, then that's what really blew up poker. What was that? But, but um, that was when was that? That was a to me. It seemed like it was like two days ago, but I don't know. It was Ten, oh, to twenty years ago when that happened. I love it. Yeah, um, but even then, they never really emphasized the the gambling side of poker. It was a tournament play. It was how you play the cards. It's it was, a strategy. Right, it's a strategy, the reading the players and making these crazy calls and crazy plays. And there's excitement, there's drama in it. But, um... It's strange because poker is a game, it's all about... It's literally all gambling, right? Yeah, I mean, poker, but you, poker is gambling. I mean, the whole right. essence of poker is gambling. There's nothing about pool that says it's gambling. Pool is you're putting... Making a ball, you're taking a piece of wood or now carbon, hitting a little ball, usually into another ball, and making it go where you want it to go, ball or some good. variation of that. There's nothing inherent. It's like golf. You're hitting a ball on a big, huge pitch that's all curvy, trees in the way, and bunkers and everything else, and you're trying to make that ball go in a little hole. There's mm -hmm. nothing that says gambling about that. If you watch pool, there's nothing that says gambling about pool. Poker can't exist without gambling. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess you could. I don't know anybody who's ever played poker for other money. than little kids for but no even, money. But even when you play with little kids, you put little stakes on it, like things that oh, are yeah. important to them. Yeah. Like little candies, things like that. Okay, Joe, let's go talk to Earl. Sean, you're the marketing guy. So let's see, here. let's see what he says. What's he saying? The word pool itself is the pool in the middle. Oh, is that where it comes from? Like the, the pool, pot the in pool, the yeah, the pool, pool, the pool, the yeah, the pool of money in the middle. Is that where the word pool came from? I wonder. You know what my dream is? My dream is that when I search blah, 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 pool, uh -huh. or when I search pool, like billiard stuff comes up, not right. freaking swimming pools. Right. That's my big dream. we got to make it happen. I don't want to get rid of swimming pools, though. I don't want no. To. When I'm Googling. Don't cancel swimming pools. Cancel. 2008. That's a no, culture word. 2003. So, yeah, about 20 years ago. That was over 20 years ago. 2024 now. I know. Can you believe it? It's current year again. Suddenly. Hey, nice. Um, okay, cool. We've, so, we've yeah, fun. it's funny now you mention it, Joe. And I, I'm one of those people. I, I'm I'm a student of the game. I'm a student of a lot of different ways. I love the history. I love the history of the game. I have never even thought about where they came up with the word pool for the name of the pool. I don't know how they came up with the word billiards either. But... I think it's French. Cool well, French? <laughs> no, just made that up. Yeah. Did it sound convincing, though? Like, oh, I think it could be French. <laughs> I mean, it sounds convincing as Earl saying that it got its name from the pool of money that's being gambled at. I'm not saying it isn't, but that's interesting. I wonder if anybody really, at this point, knows. Yeah, Joe says the uh, word origin, they brought outdoor bowling indoors. And elevated. And more holes. We have the internet. 
We can just look up the origin of the word. And if it's on the internet, it's got to be true. Well, there's such a thing as a dictionary pool. <laughs> yeah, because dictionaries are always true. Oh, no. Look, see, swimming pools. Pool. Definition. I don't want definition. I want etymology. Well, it's going to show us the entomology. Ooh, I was close. It's West Germanic. Wait, are you looking at the same pool? Uh huh. Noun. A form of billiards in which the object is to pocket all the balls with a cue ball. There are many versions of the game. Straight pool or eight ball. Are you reading this? Right there. Oh my gosh, you're right. Yeah, because I can read. No, no, no. But if we go down to origin, you're right. Oh, the verb pool is French. It comes from the French. <laughs> it's right. Yes. I told you. <laughs> I'm pretty smart. I'm pretty smart. So, come on down. But the verb is putting pool into a bottom, into a common fund. Oh, like, oh come on. Yeah, we know that what that word means. I want to know etymology. Good. I was just trying to make you mad by scrolling past yeah. the point that you wanted to go to. Also, I don't know what you're looking for, so. Entomology pool. All right. Oh, dang it. Jamie's still coming in. Hot. Don't say dang it. Why not? You said yes. it. I say dang it because when Benny missed, I'm like, dang it, Benny, I want you to win. I don't say dang it when Jamie wins. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm used to doing the woo-woo. In the house. <laughs> now I'm woo -woo -woo right here. All right. According to Tell us story. Pool and Billiards Q dot com, why pool is called pool. The origin of the term pool and Q sports in the world of Q is coming to refer to the pool. If you ever wonder why, um, no, or pool not context. As you're saying, the term pool originally referring to a collective betting system where players would contribute money into a common fund or pool and then be rewarded the winner of the game. Rand Randy's just sitting at home like, yes, I just told you guys. Like, why are yeah, you Yeah, he's like, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm I just can't believe this. I never thought about it. Like, I never yeah. questioned it. This betting arrangement was popularized in the 19th century in America, particularly in bars and saloon as well the Games played on the pool tables where it gets to place are known as pool. Huh? So, what? Beep, beep, beep. Okay. Well, it's been great seeing you again, EC. I'll see you in a few weeks. So bedding rooms became known as pool rooms. The table's even green. From, yeah, well, the, yeah, the, yeah, pool table, we saw a new pool or billiards originated because it was form of a, it wasn't really bowling, I thought it was croquet. Um, I think you're right, I think it was in Europe. Yeah, I think it was a form of croquet where that, when it became too, too cold or too rainy they wanted to keep playing and so they set up a table so it had a way of dropping um and they would actually stand on the tables it's croquet mounts and it morphed down this is what i remember reading about the history and it, and it morphed down to the fact they got below the table and used a developed a pull cue instead of using a mallet but that goes back it seems centuries. like uh, it goes back there's a castle in Germany called the Mad King's Castle. They have like a old old pool table that's in that castle. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool seeing like the pool table is just like a few hundred years old. <laughs> so here, here is a the thing that I really want to wanted to get into is what Randy says. Pool will get better. <sighs> pool will have sponsorships, I think. I think it'll have a much better aura of a of the game itself, where people will appreciate what the game is. It just won't happen in our generation. It needs a data. I it's, it's I don't know. It's not that it's it, it won't be a data wipe. 
It just has to evolve. No, and no, no. It, it needs a Dana White. Oh, a Dana. Oh, yeah. It needs Dana. somebody that's going to come in and be like, "This is what we're doing going forward." No, and see, gets a sponsor. I don't. I don't think so. I don't think that's ever going to happen. You don't think it's ever going to happen? Not like that. It's not going to be abrupt. I think it's going to be something where it's going to go generation to the next generation. The next generation is going to start treating the game as a sport and less as a mode of gambling, where that gambling is not the primary function. Because, for you know, like I said, the, the origins of pool was... Gambling was the primary function. The game of pool was secondary to the gambling. Well, that's just because we started calling it pool, though. I mean, that's not... I mean, pool isn't... To me, pool isn't the actual game. Like, it isn't the actual name of the game, you know? It's more well, familiar. we were talking about the, the, the yeah. etymology of, of where pool came from, a betting pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I've, I've, I've seen that stuff before. Yeah. So, but and that's I think, what I'm saying, like, the actual game, though, that's only in the U.S. Well, yeah, yeah exactly. But that's what we're talking about. I mean, we're talking yeah. about... Yeah. U.S. pool. pool billiards U.S. billiards. Pool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how I many people do you know will suddenly start calling the game billiards? Uh, Hockey billiards. Going to call it billiards from this. They're going to call it pool. It's just how it's going to be. Um, but most people won't even care why it's called pool. They what just know you, that's the name of it. What do you think of the WPA then? Like their recent move to kind of make it more of a sport. I think. I mean, that's it's how it's got to evolve. That's what I'm saying. A lot. It's, it's going to be a long term evolution to get what we, what we want is going to happen. A lot it of just high- isn't going to happen until people like Savannah. It's probably in their fifties. A lot of high level players, see it, though, who didn't like what WPA did. So, like a lot of high level players seem like they're kind of turning their backs on the WPA right now because of that. Do, do, doing what? Uh, WPA basically made it to where. Oh my god! Let me think of the exact thing. Uh, if you're part of the WPA, you're not allowed to play in sanctioned events outside of the WPA. They have to be like WPA. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. They, they've been doing that for years. No, and, they haven't really oh, they held just, true to it. <laughs> no, no, because they get caught and people go against it and they change their tune. They've been trying to do it for years. A lot of, uh, here's my take on it, though, is that a lot of sports already do that. And it, honestly, it's, it makes sense, but I think if you have to pay the players that are in the WPA enough money for it to make sense. I don't, I mean, I don't know too many, I mean, other than the PGA that tried to do the same thing with. Oh, a lot of sports do it. UFC does it. Uh, yeah, Bellator does it. Okay. Um, what else does it? Uh, bodybuilding does it. A lot of the bodybuilding okay. places. I mean, I think it's... I think, it's, I think, I think, I think it's, it's ridiculous. Really golf. I think a lot of the golf uh, organizations do it, too. Well, like I said, the PGA was going to do it when the uh, when the other one, the, the Saudi organization, did. and then they ended up merging. Yeah. So... We'll take you out. You can turn that But uh, I think so I, like, I think it kind of makes sense, but I, I don't think that the well, WPA just pays I, 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 where it makes sense. I was I was gonna say I don't think the WPA has the the leverage on no. the players to do that. No, they don't. And they should. I mean, they can. But I mean, I think they have. But to I me, think that's they, just they can. It's just an, uh, an another example of an organization that is too scared of competition and are trying to. Basically, bully the, the players for doing anything else. It's just, but I, I think like it's perfectly reasonable if they play the if they pay them enough money. I mean, I don't think it's reasonable. I think if you got a good product, you're paying them money. Why they, you know, let go somewhere else? I know they want it, but people people want to maximize the profits instead of trying to make. I mean, to me, it actually would make the sport better if you had good competitions. Might make the players play better too. <sighs> I mean, you have the NFL and you have the CFL. It's not. I don't really like know how NFL that works, is. though. Can you play on the NFL and the CFL? Well, you usually have a contract with the team. Yeah, so you, you, you can only play. play on one team, though, right? Yeah. I mean, typically, yeah, you only play. On so you're not going to play on both. That was a good shot. Yeah, that was a really good shot. And this uh, score is looking a little bit grim right now, unfortunately. I was also wondering, like America, 
almost has a rebellious <laughs> culture to them anyway. Oh, for sure. So, I mean, <laughs> that's what it's kind of based nature, on, right? <laughs> it's sort of the nature of being Americans. You're always going to have this little Wild West mentality with, with America. <laughs> so, that was a nice shot. I wonder, I, I do kind of wonder, like, are casinos willing to, like, open their doors to, like, more tournaments and stuff like that? I don't think so. Because that's really the only place I see, like, pool going, is to places that kind of condone those sort of things, you know? As, as long as there's, you know. I mean, it's funny because you have scumbag players and coaches and other people that are manipulating the, the betting industry, sports betting industry. Oh, for sure. You know, I mean, if you watch it, some of the NFL games this year and you're like, how? Seriously? It's obviously they're trying to cover a spread or they're trying to keep it in the under or they're doing something. I mean, they're just making certain decisions, certain plays are just ridiculous. But I think it still looks legit enough for enough people to bet on it and want to take the bets. But as soon as you get a large collection of the players that are working together, I mean, it, if you remember the, the World Series, if, and now you guys, if you guys know what I'm talking about, the old World Series with the, uh, I think the, the Red Sox, this is back in the 20s, 30s. There you go. A while back. Yeah, it was a while back, and there was a huge conspiracy to throw the game, to throw the World Series for betting. And it almost, I mean, people thought it was going to ruin, uh, it was going to ruin baseball. But, but it didn't. It, it ended up not. Do you think that that one match that I was talking about earlier? That one match I was talking about earlier actually changed the uh, pool that much? Yes. You think yeah. it was that one specific one? Yeah, that one match that was on TV. And the problem is, for people who knew Poole, who knows pool and watch pool, and especially know Buddy Hall and how he played, and there's some oh, shots he would miss. miss some bad shots. The shots that he would miss and the way he would miss it. And he would miss shots so bad that he intentionally missed, but he would miss it so bad. Is the score right? Uh, we're verifying. Um, uh, it was just so egregious. I mean, I think there were, uh, I think there were wrestlers that were taking notes on how to <laughs> make it look so obvious. <laughs> I think wrestlers were making fun of how bad of a performance it was. Well, so, that guy that won was like, what, oh, they gave him like a hundred to one. Oh, it's super long like that. shot. Super, super long shot. You know, of course, I think everybody was in on it, but him. <laughs> he was so excited to win the tournament, and he played his heart out. But he did probably didn't make as much money as they did, though. Probably not. But I guess it's so. Buddy obvious. Hall was that talk about a dude that was a monster player, though. That guy could shoot. Oh, I think he just. Yeah, you're right. Jamie ball. is pretty much just even on the message. Cruising. Oh, that's going to be a nice safety that is out of it. Good. That is good. Except for I think we're going to get a nine ball call in the corner. See, this is what's nice about being here. Is I can say, hey, we might get a nine ball call in the corner. And then when he says, I'm calling a nine here in the corner, which he just did. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't feel bad now. I don't say, oh, oh, he heard me say it. And he got every ball rolling except the nine. Okay, and the three. But everything rolled but the die. Well. All right, we fixed the score. I guess I got messed up. I'm not really sure when I got messed up. All right. Um, John will have to field that question for you, Jerry. What is the question? How much is in the middle, please? Zero. We don't gamble on road player. What? We don't. We're not gambling. At least not to my knowledge. As they would say, uh, council has advised us. <laughs> council. Council has advised to not gamble to, to, on live streams. To, to say there is no gambling on live streams. 
Now, if those two individuals have the business going on amongst themselves that we are not privy to at all in any way, that's that's up to them. Yep, that's up to them. <laughs> so, I, I feel kind of bad about it because it is what makes it exciting to watch knowing what kind of skin is in the game. Well, sometimes. Oh, my God. You know. But, unfortunately, uh, road players decided to be legit. <laughs> oh, that's a nice shot. That was a really there. good shot. I thought he was going to touch the five. Yeah, I know. He, he, I thought he, I mean, that was a tight. I mean, he just did miss that five to make it that side pocket. That was a really nice shot. What do you think about having a tournament on road player? I don't know. Like on the stream. It would take a while. Oof, start in the morning, bro. It would take a while. It's going to be shorter races. I'll tell you that. <laughs> you know what's funny? Benny is not playing badly. He's just he's just making the mistakes, small mistakes, at the worst crazy. possible times of these games. Yeah, now I've seen some really good shots he's made, like some really good shots. So yeah, if the players have some sort of private business going on, that's up to them. If non-players have certain private businesses going on amongst themselves or with anybody else. I, think, I don't know. I think Joe just the said hands are clean. I think Joe, Joe just gave us the FBI approval. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, all right, Benny with a nice little Karoom on the uh, nine ball. Get him off. Seven to sixteen. Mm -hmm. Nice try, CIA. <laughs> yeah. That was, I mean, that that is one of the things that was kind of interesting. Early, the earlier streams, when or council became privy <laughs> to that stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, there were people that would have private chats, and if somebody in chat said, "Hey, I'm in the mood for a little business," message me. Well, I mean, we can't stop private messages amongst social media. Um, outlets. I don't think it's actually illegal to gamble against two people in Georgia. I think it's illegal to make side bets though, which yes. is kind of weird. It's it's definitely legal, illegal to put money on an event which you have absolutely no control of. So yeah, if you have no control of it, then... Now, what's interesting... What was that from? Oh, Jesse Holman said, do y'all play pool too? Uh, we play a little. Yeah, there. <laughs> ah. That's that. Bit of a chat. We haven't played on stream. Well, I guess I played on stream one time. Yeah, he's played once. I didn't, I didn't do the good. I mean, I did the best that I could. <laughs> This is kind of interesting. Benny, Benny is still fighting, though. I don't know. I don't know if you could really like uh, get shape after the one to do the combo on the two nine. Like that would be kind of rough. Not you could from here. Where would you go? I think straight top gets you there. Actually, I think straight top gets you on the side of the three, though. Unless it's a really long shot like this. I think you can actually, if you didn't spin it out, I think you could have uh, just put top and gone underneath down. the eight. See, I thought he had too much angle to like put top on it. I thought it would, like, even with straight top, I felt like it was still going to go like three rails. Yeah, is he going to play a billiard or is he going to play combo? He plays combo. 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 Yeah, I don't. I, I kind of like the billiard a little bit better there. Yeah, I couldn't really see the angle that well. See how, how thin of a cut on the ball with the billiard would have been. So Jesse, where do you where do you play out of Jesse? So around. Are you getting four? To, if you're getting four to six hours of quality practice a day, you, you will improve very quickly. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, gambling is such an interesting topic, though. Like, I really don't understand why poker is considered gambling. Playing poker because... Wow, what a combo. Wow, what a great combination that was. I mean, that's a that's a 10-foot combination right there. I know. I think, uh, I think he figured out the secret to coming back. Yeah, so early, nine. early nine. Yeah. Wear, that. Let your opponent wear himself out for 16 games and then <laughs> and then just quickly get him back in no time at all with low, no effort. <laughs> um. <laughs> where are you from, Jesse? Yeah, Jesse, where you uh, where do you play out of? Probably Joe knows Jesse pretty well. Unless he's trying to be all incognito at this point. I'll fix these. He's like, oh, I'm on four and APA. One went in. That's, a, back in the pocket. that's an interesting spot to break from. It's like just on the corner of the box, basically. Like that, so yeah. <laughs> it's possible. Where are you from, Jesse? You guys play out of Marietta or where? At? Guys on the south side. Yeah. Uh, maybe they want to keep their honey holes to themselves. They don't want anybody else coming around their area. Wiping all their good action. Oh, that's a nice cut. That was a good cut. Getting a little, little corner, nipple of. A little corner shape. As they would say in, in Europe, and the knuckle, the knuckle of the pocket. I made a ball off the nipple the other day on purpose, playing at a bar. Uh oh, that is whoo! Oh, uh, we got it. Uh, that was living on the edge right there. You gotta be careful on this. Get a little on the edge. Thing. Like I said, Benny's been playing well. He's just it just seems like certain points just goes wrong. Maybe uh, Benny's just caught a second wind. He's ready to go. That is the nice thing about gambling sometimes, though, is like being able to play more than one set. Because in tournaments, it feels like, damn, you're when you're out. But, ah, okay. So Joe is saying out there in Homer's in Homer, Georgia. Oh, shit, Homer. And they had a team playing at Moonshiners. Oh. Oh, my Moonshiners, the one that is at Brazelton? Is it Brazelton or Moonshiners? Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah, I think that's the one that they play in. They're opening up a new one in Gainesville, I believe. Are they? I think so. Hmm. That's interesting. And of course, you got the rail in Athens. You can, uh, if you're at the rail in Athens, you can say hi to my buddy Don. I need to get back up to Athens a little bit more. Yeah, we need to go back down there again. I want to meet the other gentleman you were telling me about that plays there. Hmm. Buford. What is in Buford? Well, poor room's in Buford. I don't know what poor room in Buford. Hmm. It's mirrors. That mirrors. That mirrors. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out what Buford Oh, he plays out of... Have, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he plays out of Stars and Strikes. Oh, yeah, but he's a Buford. I'm like, it's a Buford. Oh, the new Moon Moonshiners is going to be a Buford. Oh, they're. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So, what kind of uh, what kind of tips do you guys play with? You got it's like your soft tips, your hard tips, later tips. Don't. You don't old use school, a scuffer. You doing the old school the pro tips? Do not use a scuffer. Triangle tips for all you old school players. Or you guys are all layered, soft. Elk master. Cards. Elk master to the day I die. Elk master. That's old school. 
Uh, El Unless, Caster still has the softest tip, though. Unless you decide to milk dud it. Milk dud? Yeah. Make a milk dud. Milk duds are a lot of times made out of Elk Masters. What do they do? Uh, milk, milk duds are basically tips that have been soaking in milk. Is it an Elk Master tip that they soak in milk? Uh, it's different tips they'll do, it, but most times I've ever heard uh, is with Elk Masters. They make it even softer than the normal Elk Well, what it does, so porous, a lot of the fats milk get into the tip. Oh. And then something magical happens and you press it. So not only do you let it soak for a while, then you put it on a press in a vise. And it really hardens it up. So it just, people love it. Oh, I wonder for how long. I've never heard of that before. Really? As, you can ask Ben about it. Yeah, I might ask him. Ask Ben Smith, uh, some you talk to him. Because I was actually thinking about switching to Elk Master for a little bit just to see how they play. See, I'm on the other side of the spectrum. I like hard. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. A lot of you people know, you, love milk duds, though. I like using English. For better or for worse. Joe says, I have a few milk duds, the longest lasting tip I ever used. All right. And from what I understand, very consistent plank tips. Very, very consistent plank tips. Somebody got the space next to it and opened the wall. So a bar and pool room and eight tables now. Wait, where is this at? Is this the one in Grayson or? Wait, not, is it Grayson that the other one is? The one's in Buford? No. The uh, Moonshiners. They have two locations. Uh, Brattleton. One's Brattleton. Yeah, and then Buford's the new one. Oh, wait, no. Google's about to tell us some shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Is he going to get lucky? Oh, God, he got it. I'm apologizing. Yeah. Get lucky and things work out. Yeah, Grayson. So you have one in Grayson, one in Brazelton. Oh, uh, okay. So, so this is the third one opening in Buford? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I think that's what uh, Matt was saying, is that he's oh. trying to get a third one in Buford. Maybe that's going to be the new thing. <laughs> yeah, Gainesville is definitely in Hall County. So yeah, there's three three main showers. I'd be interesting as Buford because I'm in the Buford area on Thursday nights. So oh. I like to swing by there and check it out. I want to go. Oh, I want to go back. Benny, 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 Benny. I want to go back to that three cushion place. Benny is using the entire pocket of that shot. Is that? I want to go to back to that three cushion place that we were at. Oh. No, that's core change. Um. <laughs> so yeah, what about tips, guys? What do you guys prefer with your tips? I actually, it's, I, I used to always play the really hard tip, and I've backed off to a little bit. Uh, yeah, nine something score has been updated. Yeah, it wouldn't. Wouldn't update for some reason. Sure. Yeah. So I've gone to a slightly softer, but not. I mean, it's. It's. A, I would say like a medium hard tip is where I'm playing with it right now. But it just plays so well. I started playing with a Kamui Super Soft a few years ago. I really liked it. Kevin put a something else on my queue last time, but I think I'm probably going to go back or go to the Elk Master for a little bit and see how it plays. Okay. The Kamui's just last so long. The Kamui Blacks. Hard to beat how long those things will last. I mean, but, yeah, I mean, but the softer it tip, the less life it's different. That's what they say, but the Kamui Super Soft seems to last a really long time. But, I mean, just because it's super harder. soft. They become harder. It does become a little bit harder. But I have a scuffer. The scuffer actually keeps it pretty good. Mm. Well, not a scuffer. It's a, it's like a weird like pick scuff thing. I don't even know what that was called. It's not a pick. It's a, it's like a pad. I don't even know what the, the thing is called. Sandpaper thing. 
So, Joe, you got some counterfeit towns? I can understand being counterfeit tips, but... Yeah, you definitely got to know your sources when you're going to buy tips. Yeah. I think Nisi gets hers from a distributor. That'll get hit. Distributor in China. No, it's a distributor here in the U.S. <laughs> I do worry about that with Amazon a little bit, though. Getting a tip on Amazon, if it's going to be real or not sometimes. But, I mean, it, I'll say this for the sports. I mean, there's a lot more counterfeit tips. There's counterfeit cue balls, for sure. The, the measles balls. So many counterfeit measles balls that play like garbage. So, apparently, pool has gotten big enough that people are willing to counterfeit now. So, wow. <laughs> so that's that's a plus. Look at that safety. <laughs> that's a brutal safety. You have to jump. So yeah, there you go. Pool, pool is taking off. We're good enough to be counterfeiting now. <laughs> I think it, if you can jump this and hit the two, I think you might be pretty good because it looks like it might get safe. Oh, he's going for the kick. Doesn't like the jump. Just, Just did. missed it. Barely miss up. Got it right in the corner. All right. Well, this is a pretty, pretty standard run out here. I think they're going for the mean, nine. By which I mean he's thinking about playing the combination. Chris French. Appreciate it, Chris. So, do you know if it was a real town that just didn't wear well? Do you think it was something wrong with it? Or do you think it was a fake? That's interesting. It looks like he's giving himself angle. Oh, the, the fake the fake cue balls are garbage. If you ooh, get a little combination. And, oh no, it's not play the uh, safety, which is a much smarter shot, I think. Yeah, I like it's the I like safety. the safety there a little bit. I don't know why he drew it back so far. He drew that cue ball back really. Oh, to set up the safety. Yeah. Oh. Because I mean it looked like the three went. Like it didn't really look like uh I don't I don't think it's good by the uh, but Makes a nice kick and ooh, he dodged a lot of stuff. Check Facebook. There's a lot of weird things that could have gone on on that one. Yeah. Can you make this? <laughs> Go real first. Spin it. You have to. You have to have a stroke of that. He's just playing a little bit more of a safe, trying to get. And he played it safe. Yeah, Lord, they're good. Yeah, they started life fine, but as they wore down, they were junk. Jesse Mountain New Wins. That's interesting to know about the towns. Hmm. Oh, he can make that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely uh, fakes. If you think you're going to get a... Uh, They're probably so cheap to make. Probably why. Yeah, but I mean, the, the quality of the leather probably isn't there. The the adhesive for the laminations isn't as good. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, you know, they're probably so cheap to make, but they're worth, like, counterfeiting because you can probably make them for, like, 20 cents a piece or something like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. And people who don't know better, I mean, it'd be interesting to find out how many, what percentage of people that play pool really know the equipment and all that one. Mm-hmm. I play with people who've been playing for years, and they'll just say that, "Hey, you know, cue ball's a cue ball." <laughs> I, uh, at my old job, I X-rayed like a couple of my cue balls, and okay. I think I X-rayed like one of my uh, cue shafts okay. or two of my cue shafts. I think I, I think I uh, X-rayed the three fourteen that I had, just to see the inside, see like if uh, I had like missing spots and stuff like that. Kind of okay. interesting to do. Be interesting to see some of these cue balls if you have a density difference at some points at all. Yeah, because that's what they say that they do, like uh like especially the knockoffs. Oh yeah. They have um like almost air pockets on the inside with the resin. I think I think that's where a lot of cyclop balls that might not yeah, they have found that you have density issues in some of the balls. The original uh, predators had some issues with them too, didn't they? 
all we could. Which the new ones have that metal core in them, which is kind of nifty. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm partially the Xan tips, but. Xan tips? Yeah, the Xan. I, I'm playing with the, uh, the hybrid max, and I'm really liking that tip. Is it hard? Yeah, it's a little bit softer than their hard one. It's like a medium hard. They used to have like a really, really soft tip. Oh, they do. Yeah. I tried one. I didn't. Maybe I got a counterfeit, but I did not really like the uh, soft Xan so much. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's all preference anyway. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're if your game is used to Kamui, it's probably not going to like a lot of other things. I used a. That was a nice bank and a nice controlled uh, mission play. I used whatever Predator had on theirs for a long time. Predator uses the Vantage tips. The old Predators? Oh, the old Predators. Oh, the old Predators. What they use? I think they used Kamui Browns. Did they? Yeah, I think so maybe I did have a Kamui on there. Maybe that's why I liked it so much. Yeah, I think I, they used Kamui Browns back then. Yeah, I've never used. I, I really haven't gone outside of Zans and Kamui's. So I really can't speak much for the Tigers or the other ones. I will say this: I do like the the guys at Tiger, though. If you ever meet the uh, the owner, and those guys, those are really good guys at Tiger. So, which actually, I don't, I don't think they will be at BCA this year. I don't think they make. I don't think they make a lot of trade shows anymore, mainly because the guy that does all their, not all of them, but the, the main guy that does their queue work, man, he is just good. Really? He is, man, you should see him do a rap. He's just like, zoop, zoop. Was like, just done. Just like, it's nothing. It's amazing watching him. Oh, man, he is, he's, I mean, he's got to be pushing upper 80s. Over, yeah. I was showing Nisi like all the different types of wraps the other day. Some oh, really, yeah. some really beautiful like green tail lizard wraps and stuff out there. Oh, they're so beautiful, especially the white ones, the white and black ones. And those are some of my favorites. There's a Sean. There's an old Sean Q uh, that uh, Joe. Okay. Have a good day. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Later, Joe. Of course, if you knew how to get all of Jamie Benny, you might be able to. Contact them. Well, probably not if they're playing. But you could have asked them. But like I said, I'm sorry that we don't give those informa that information out. But we, at this point, we don't even know. We have yeah. no idea what they're. They're playing at 25, but so, we don't know what. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, nice talking to you, Joe. Have a good day. Later, Joe. Have a good one. Bye. See you again. Hit that like and follow if you haven't. <laughs> Send stars. Send some stars if you want. <laughs> uh, star. Oh, yeah. Forget to say that again. Uh, we have stars activated now, everybody. Congratulations, us. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to donate to the channel, feel free to leave us some stars. Uh, it was a big pain in the ass for us to get that out thing actually working. Oh, he went for the nine. Oof. He said, uh... Okay. <laughs> Wow, it's been a while since I've been on the Tiger side. They have changed their... What all they got on there? Oh, they just changed the format. What did you think of that Filipino queue I sent you the other day? That one that said Lucky 7 Casino on it or something like that? <laughs> I thought I sent it to you. It didn't look too bad. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, it was unique. It was a very... We like Vegas and gambling and... Yeah. It's, it was a neat looking queue. It's a queue maker in the Philippines. Was it in the Philippines? Yeah. So I don't know how legit it was. I mean, it probably is. I mean, they make some really good stuff out there. He was trying to sell it to me for like 300 bucks. Yeah. Might be a good queue for $300. Might be. It's... Well. Let's see. Oh shit, look at that shot. Look at that shot. Do you? That was a good shot. Knock right around it. 
No, 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 no. He kicked that in oh, and well, snuck yeah. around it. Snuck around it. Kick, sneak around. That was actually probably one of the better strokes that I've actually seen him shoot today. He did It seems like some of his strokes have been kind of punchy, but that one is like smooth and just kind of yeah. true. Got it. Well, I said overall, Benny's not playing bad. It, the score definitely does not indicate how Benny's been playing. So no, he's he's just not bad been closing. Luck he's just uh, well, he's had bad luck, but he's just having problems closing out a lot of these games. Yeah, he's missed uh, quite a few nine balls. It seems like. Yeah, he's definitely looking a lot more comfortable with the stroke. Yeah, he's that, starting that's to get a in. very confident stroke. I'd have just hit fuck it mode. You got like so far behind. He's just, fuck it, let's go. Sometimes when you hit fuck it mode, it works. Oh no, last three balls. Yeah, like I said, and he's seven just, ball right he's in front just, of the He's just having problems closing this game out. Rough. I kind of like shooting this with top a little bit and getting it in the cue ball actually on the rail. Instead of trying to hold it, it's kind of weird, but. Hmm. Yeah, a little straight. He's got to stroke this ball a little bit. Just give it a table if he needs some easier shots. Just leave it uh, tough. No. Yeah, he's going to leave it long shot. Benny has an awesome shout out. My wife, who graciously allows me to have the time to play my UPA brothers and sisters. Right. Here's to the wife. Oh, so and Amy missed there, the nine ball. You guys out there playing with old King George, UPA, UPA? King George. I haven't heard that name in a while. <laughs> and a pool wife just said, yeah, go pool wives. <laughs> and Betty missed the nine ball. Yeah, I don't see on their on Tiger's website. Oh, nope, King George is here. There he is. Speak of the devil, he shall appear. Oh, they're, uh, yeah, they're having a rough little time with the uh, last nine ball here. Yeah, it's looking. I don't see on their website because you. Their old website would say where they're going for trade shows, and I don't see anything now, so they may not do trade shows anymore. It is a hassle to do trade shows. Oh, wow. I can all the equipment. Oh, God. Yeah, so it does. Actually, me. I do trade shows every once in a while. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a pain in the ass. I'm <laughs> saying, as a, as, a, as a vendor, you know, you're packing up all the stuff you want to sell, and that's a lot of stuff for a big obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, APA or BCA, where you have tons of people. I mean, you got to take a lot of product with you. You know, it's, it's a lot of times it's just, it's almost, you're not sure if it's worth it. I mean, you think it's worth it in the long run that people order you down the line, but, you know, you got to lock it all up. You got to invest in security cameras, stuff like that. And you got to, you know, it's, there's a lot that goes in and then packing up and leaving. And, yeah. You gotta pay people to watch over the place. Just saying, there's those, those guys go through a lot when uh, you know, to put those. You a lot of cute stuff, vendors out uh, there. You find stuff that you like, buy from the vendors. You know, keep uh, keep all those activities alive. Make it worth their while. Look at that three ball. Three ball looking a little rough. Uh, I think. It's... I, I think, think we have a breakout. If you place. stun it over. Well, if you stun it right here, I think you'll be on the good side of the two to yeah, break that's it what off. I'm thinking. You can you can go into the balls at this point. There you go. Oh, I don't know if that's enough of an angle. That's a pretty he pushed small it, angle. But... It's a pretty small angle for this, so he might he's looking at something else now. Ooh, what if he played cross side and drew it? Drew, I mean just hard draw stroke into it. Oh, mm -hmm. that's possible. I don't know if he's got the angle. No, I'm saying if he played it bank. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Then, you're, you, then you, you create that, the yes, angle. yes, yes. Then you create the angle. You create the angle. You're also creating a, a chance for a double kiss, but <laughs> that would have been a that would have been a fancy, fancy shot. 
I've done that before, playing oh, yeah. like APA and shit. Oh, Ooh, the double chest in the corner. I don't know. That See, that's why, that's but why we're in the booth. <laughs> that's why we are in the booth talking about pool. Well, these guys are playing it. Yes, yeah, so, was it Joe somebody. or somebody asking earlier if we play pool? Not that. Good. No, we don't play that pool. That's, nah, that's, that's above us. Like two, two in APA. That's way up in our heads, past our pay grade. <laughs> How's it going to go up and down? What it looks like. It. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't that's even tell like so because the angle's coming out. You gotta be careful with that. I kind of like putting inside on that one. I know, right? Shocking. You gotta put. I like putting inside on that just to hold it. Well, you gotta put something. You can't let it naturally go at the angle. You have to go inside or outside. Spin it around or hold it in. Yeah, man. There you go. It's down Benny, the last three balls again. Benny's got a chance to. Oh, last two. Yeah, he made that ball. I, thought I think, he was about if, to think if Benny can make a couple of nine balls, I think he might start catching back in. Yeah, like it seems to be on the eight nine. I would, I would predict if he makes the next 11, 12 nine balls, yeah, yes. he's got a game. He's got, he's got a good opportunity to win. Let's <laughs> see. Correct. Hmm. I need a cough button on these microphones. Sorry, guys. <laughs> If that's not a setup, we got a little quick button. Hit it. Click. Quick. <laughs> cough button. No, I just got the cough. The button on the microphone itself. I do like how Benny took his time there on that shot. He did not take it for granted. He didn't just get down to hit it. He did all of his uh, routine right there. That's 10 to 19. You got to put the effort. Even on those easy, easy shots, you got to put that effort. This went by a little faster. I thought it was going to go for sure. Well, I mean. Two and a half hours. It did go pretty quick. <clears throat> One person mentions UPA and the whole chat lights up. <laughs> Me too. That's great though. It's that's the other thing I like. I like the fact that there's different leagues. I've never played UPA. Never played UPA. Is it any good? It's it's you should check it out. Yeah, King you got George. King George, he's the one who runs it up there in Moonshiner, so he runs it uh, other places as well. Okay. So he he does do tournaments. He does singles tournaments, he does doubles tournaments. I don't know if he's got anything. Oh, that's gonna count. The nine ball. That's gonna count. Good for the goose, good for the gander. Jamie had won it earlier that way. Yep. So now both of them so had a nine on the break. Benny, Benny has tied that score up. Now they get a patch. We don't have any patches. Leave it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I still disagree with that rule, but that's, that's, once again, we have nothing to do with that. You mean if I play against you, you're going to make me call the nine on the break? No, I'm just not going to let you rack your break and uh, count. You can rack my break in the nine count. I mean, that's wow. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, if I rack it so poorly that the nine goes in, that's my fault. Awesome. John Smash. <laughs> Top English Smash. <laughs> there is actually a nine ball break, though, that supposedly increases your chances. But it's still it's still all about those back three balls. Huh? It's all about the back three balls. Three balls behind How the tight nine. they are? Yes. See, if they're tight, that's what it should happen. Nine, nine ball barely moves. Nine ball barely moves. So that's what a tight rack should look like. Of course, if the front three ball is loose, then there's not much of them. And then it just up. peters out. I've gotten where I break a lot softer lately, though. Oh, that's a good taste. Look at that. We're going to have three. Jump it. Is he going for the six? Yeah, well, jumpy jump. Not oh, nice jump. jump. With what the a combination. Jump. Yeah. Oof. I see. I like kicking this one ball right now. 
Just trying to stick the cute ball behind the the uh, five. Kick it. Yeah, kick it. I kind of like hitting it then with the right English. Cue ball's going all there. Try to get around and get behind the. Uh... See, I like the cue ball being behind the five. Yeah, I mean that shot in mind, but you have to let that cue ball get up tape. Yeah, but it doesn't look like you're, gonna look it. At, you're looking at. A, yeah, you're looking at a safe like you. Yeah, you're that's like, gonna be a brutal oh, safe. Yeah, this is a lot worse. Yeah. See, I like kicking it and just letting kind of like with a little bit of a uh, top. That way, it kind of holds right yeah, behind the fly ball. Yeah, make sure you hit that object ball where you want. If you don't, oh, for sure, it leaks out. You're gonna lose that thing. But yeah, this is uh, this is about a bad position you could be after that shot. But. It is kickable, and he does make contact. But no room. And it's not going to get around, though. Maybe is he's the eyeing up a nine ball? No, he's just going to get to the side. I think that's smart. He's just like, he likes top a little bit better, rolling it forward. Yeah. Certainly nothing wrong with that shot. Now one rail come out for the three. Oh, he's not taking as much time as he was earlier. No, he's not. It seems like the times he's really stretching and the times he's really rushing his shots. Probably just wants to get out of that position. Exactly. It's it's all it is. The body is like, I don't want to be here. Stroke. Oh, the cue ball pretty well. Let's go by the eight. Yeah, should go by the eight. He's got a good angle just to let it float down. He does. He's done it a little. Yeah, I mean, but he's still. He didn't really make try to make anything happen out of it. Nah. Let it go the way it wants to go. Yeah, a big eight ball here if he's not careful. That'd be better. Big stroke, big draw stroke to pull it out. Mm -hmm. Sort of found himself on the 50 yard line, though. Yeah. A little bit more towards the side. Yeah. Yeah, I think I like shooting in the side right here. I mean, I like making a side. Holding the cue ball for the eight ball is going to be a little more difficult. What are you going to be doing on the eight? I guess you could bank it, bank the seven. Yep. That's what he does. Yeah, that, that gives you better position on the eight. So oh, I think yeah, it was a body is bit. Holding it smaller angle. Yeah, you guys uh, sign up for some matches. Give us something to do. That's a nice little shot. Nice simple stroke. Just leave it for the side. Hmm. Looks like he adjusted down on the shot a little bit. Yeah, it looks like he did adjust a glass second, but it went center pocket. 12 19. Uh, it's coming back. Came yeah. back pretty far. Yeah, Benny's doing a good job. And you get closer and closer. Yeah, I want to see some one pocket on the stream. <laughs> That's what I'd like to see. So if somebody wants to play some one pocket on the stream, they're going to let us know. Some open dates. So you're gonna play me one pocket on the street. I don't know how to play one pocket. <laughs> we can play straight pull. Play straight pull. Oh, that'll that'll get all the everybody wanted to watch that. <laughs> I still think about that. Like uh, Jeremy Jones was saying that, like I guess one pocket is the number one watched thing on uh, on live streams, which I don't know if that's true. But yeah, I don't know if that's true either. I don't know where he pulled I, that I don't know, And I don't know if he said it's the most watched or the most streamed. I think he said most watched. Because it's definitely not the most streamed. I don't know. There's a lot of one pocket streams out there. I don't really see them that often. True. I see a lot of nine ball. A lot of eight ball. No straight pool. <laughs> Oh, 
the Russian pyramid. See, I see those live streams. You, I've not, I've never seen. I mean, I don't go looking for it either. Though. That's the they, they pop up. They pop up every once in a while on my YouTube. <clears throat> I always find Russian Pyramid kind of interesting because it's pretty similar to 8-Ball, you know. Too. It's honestly 8-Ball the way it probably should be. <laughs> <laughs> the cut on those tables, though. My God, those pockets. Yeah, those round, the round corners. I, they're, I think, they're round, I think, they're I think those are the just, round ones, aren't they? No, I thought they were what? angled, but they're, but they're cut parallel. Almost. Let's take a look. Russian I mean, I will say Benny is looking a lot more confident. Oh, yeah, yeah. you're right. Boys. Those are the ones that are like parallel. Of course, I say that. Say this. It's got just enough room to fit the ball in there. Right. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a top table. You get good at that game. You ain't going to be missing pool balls very often. You think we could get our pockets cut the same size as the pool balls? Yeah. Let's do that. You can you can get the pockets cut slightly smaller to pull balls if you wanted. That would suck, because then you couldn't make anything. So, you know, that's... Well, if they were the same size, you're not making them anyway. Why not? Oh, my goodness. He jammed that You ball. get real good at missing, though. The first times I've seen uh, Jamie just jam a ball. Maybe he's done a few times, but that was... Could you imagine playing one quick pronounced like that? Yeah, but I think that's how people like to play. It's super, super, super tight. That's unreasonably tight, though. Five, it was like two and a half inches. Uh, balls are two and a quarter inch. Okay, so two and maybe like a little over a quarter of them. Yeah, you you hit anything, it's done. Kevin's going for his teammate, Jamie. Like there's a lot of Jamie fans out there. Who's who's the Benny supporters? First team Benny. I think his wife's out there. She was there a minute ago. His wife's there. I if the wife's actually going for Jamie, but you know, can't say that secretly. Yeah, no. It is a good opportunity to take a look and see how uh, Jamie is looking. And, and, I mean, he's got to get down table, but he hit that so hard compared to what he needed to hit it. I wonder if he's starting to get a little frustrated now. Maybe. One thing I've noticed, though, is a lot of players kind of do that. They try to um, use uh, power instead of English, you know, to compensate. Mm -hmm. Doesn't work very well for them. Got to use the English. This is the interesting thing about the psychology of pool, especially if you're in a match like this, that you start thinking very short term. You're just looking at the last couple of games. You see you, you didn't execute shots the way you wanted to, and things aren't going well. And you get maybe Benny's put a few games together. You've got a you've got a seven game lead, and you need six games to win the match. But you're getting frustrated because things that are happening within the last 10 minutes aren't going your way. And that just messes with you. Instead of looking at the big picture, it's like, okay, let's just regroup. Let's get back to where we were. And let's just play pool. Let's close this out. See that? To me, like what you just said, too, goes back to our earlier conversation about uh, pro pool players uh, having the right type of practice. Because mm -hmm. you can't reproduce that type of pressure. I don't think I, you can I still, I still think you can. I think, I think you can. I think I think this is, says more about you, John. I think you got to work. Got, we, we know we got to work on it. We got to work on that mental game. Me? Yeah. I can't, <laughs> we gotta, we gotta what am I saying? Even when you're gambling, you're, you got no pressure. In a tournament, you got no pressure. I was. You're, you're playing. Whole line. You're that, playing in the finals of a 
national tournament, and you're just going to switch hand nonchalantly while you're flipping the cue around and get down and shoot with left hand and whatever. I never it's did a- that. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I you, ran that rack out. I broke and ran that I, rack. I, I know. <laughs> I know. It's like you, you can't produce pressure because there's no pressure. You can't sim- simulate something that doesn't exist for you. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I won't lie. I was a little frustrated the other day when I lost against uh, Charlie Brown at, at the tournament. Charlie Brown? Yeah, that was who beat me at the uh, tournament in LJ the other day. Oh, okay. Well, I was like two balls away and just hit the wrong side of like the ball that I tried to carry my cue ball off. So Jamie is coming around the final stretch of his part of the race. He only needs five. Yeah, it is a pretty pretty far gap right now. Like I said, I mean, that's the thing. If you start to get frustrated, just back up and say, hey, I need five games. Benny still hasn't got half the games he needs yet. Mm-hmm. So, just under. Yeah, this is when you're like, okay, let's get relaxed. Let's just play pool. Play smart. Play simple shots. Nice little breakout. Then try to do more than you had to. Going off Here, chaos. Let's see what happens. I was kind of, I was kind of wondering how that one was going to play out because I knew that either it really, yeah, I think when he gets like a rough angle or that's the other thing. It seems like when he does get a little, when he's not really liking a shot, he overcompensates with a stroke. It's oh. really, it's hard. That was a good shot though. He's got good angle on the six too. Oh yeah, he's got a great angle. It's just make the ball. Basically, make the ball. Good shot. Don't, don't do anything crazy. So, is he going to try to hold it? I mean, I think I think, think, I think he we know we can it. hold it. The question is, does he know that he can hold it? He goes up and down with it, which doesn't surprise me. The way he's been shooting balls, he's been shooting really firm on shots he, like that. He overhit that by almost half a table. Yeah, he could have held it and probably had less of an angle. <laughs> you know, he became because the, the nine balls on the other side of us. Same size as the ball now. Not by much, but still. I don't, I don't see why you would even try to go back and down. Well, I think he's, I think, well, I mean, I don't mind going up and down, but I mean, I don't, I don't think he really understands the speed of the cloth that it comes. So he definitely hit it. With, that is true. This is not fast cloth. Well, no, I mean, he hit it like it's. Oh, look at that shot, though. Ooh, no, no, no. no, it's not. I so think he hit above the side. So he is at 21. One. <laughs> Yeah, today's been going somewhat swift. We got two and a half hours. He's cruising. Two hours and 40 minutes. But yeah, two, two and a half hours for the match because we started like five minutes early. And interesting, these United players taking a break. I've been wondering if they were going to take a break, but they never asked for one. So. Yeah, they have played straight through this thing. They are it's soldiered up. At this point, you almost don't want to even offer a break. You got the rhythm down. They got the thing going. I hate the, hate the idea that we might affect the, the results of this match because TV timeout. Yeah, we got no commercials we need to play right now anyway, so that'd be good. Now, guys, don't forget, Nisi. Nisi will do tips if you need a little, some key work like that done. Nisi will do tips, and Salado is not currently a sponsor, but we'll still tell you that Salado is actually a pretty good place to go if you want to uh, find some matches. Increase your Fargo rate, decrease your Fargo rate for some people. Whatever you're looking at. And don't think that you can get on and just to uh, manipulate the system too much. Because you can, but... Well... Not always. I've I've seen matches where the matches got flagged, they got red flagged, and all the results, yeah, results were completely nullified. When did that happen? Uh, don't want to get into don't want to get into specific. I said so when. I didn't say who. It was, it was a it was a probably a couple months ago. Okay. Yeah. It was. I mean, I actually watched the match. There was a little lackluster performance, and then. Uh, 
but it's it's interesting some of the algorithms because they look at because they'll look at how long the match takes. That's because they know how long certain matches should take. So if it goes super quick, well, something shady going on, things like that. So yeah. there's multiple things that looks for. Match was over after five minutes. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely was. I mean, I'm not going to say it was all rigged, but it was. It was a, whoa! What a kick! What a kick! Well, but he also hooked himself. Yeah, but yeah, it was. Uh, the effort wasn't there. But Tim Orange is Fargo. I don't know if he even has one. If he does, it's probably not. It's dependable. I mean, I'm sure he has one. Hard not to for small AM. But. Yeah. He's coming in at the 692. Okay. With the 300, 392 row buses. That's pretty accurate, actually. That's pretty, pretty accurate. Um, for rotation, probably, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it can't give you one for one pocket. No, nah, they don't count one pocket far down. Of, and he just fired that ball in. Holy shit. Yeah. Hooked himself on the nine. It said he is, yeah, he's just hitting balls a little bit more firm than he needs to. I do like the kick here, though. You make the kick, I think it lines you up right on the seven, which is kind of nice. I got away with it. This is not an easy safe to play. You might just shoot this in the side pocket. I think, man, even like drawing it back behind the nine, I feel like there's a risk of scratching because you're oh, well, going to have to yeah. like fire order it into to, the eight ball. Yeah, in order to get it, that kind of draw, you're hitting that ball hard and you really don't know where the ball is going to end up. Well, I was thinking like, you, oh, we shot it. He did play it for the side. I was thinking like you play the six into the eight. That way it kind of stops the six, basically. Yeah, you hit it well. I think we had a shot like that earlier that it didn't hit. Yeah, he tried to play a safe, but he hit it so hard that the object ball came, leaked out, and actually stopped in front of the side pocket. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Oh, their numbers are reversed right now. 12, 21. And yours, wishing good wishes to everybody involved. No, I know. Reality. That was a good shot. That was a really nice shot. Jamie seems like he's shooting really good. Yeah. He just get a little less zeal on some of his shots. Yeah, he's definitely hitting them pretty pretty firm. Uh, got the uh, get the bridge out to make a little putt. She does. I think, I, that earlier. I think Kevin said that earlier. Uh oh, something just happened to our screen. Yeah. I think, uh, mm -hmm. up a little bit. Mm. Okay, looks like things caught up. Yep. Yep. Yep, had a little hiccup for a second. Properties. Jamie is about to take off on launch pad. I wonder if Jamie's starting to get a little fatigued. I haven't smoked on that break that he had before. Maybe. Maybe he's going to put uh, put all the gas in these last few games. Put everything in the tank. He ain't got far to go. No. Nope. He's three more. He's got a ten game lead here. Oh, he just went for that nine. Yeah, he did. Yeah, I'm wondering if that's partially out of trying to quickly catch up, and partially out of frustration. Maybe. Because there seem to be like some better safety options than. Going right there, but mm -hmm. I don't think Jamie got a little bit uh, 
lucky on that one. Yeah, because I don't think that was a design safe. No. I think he was going for that. Yeah, trying to hold a cue ball. But she was able to hold a cue ball. If he made it, it probably would have gone behind. Yeah, really close to tying up with the nine. He's going for the jump. Yeah. This is a small hop, though, when he had it elevated that high. Actually, I don't think that was a jump. I think he tried to mass save that ball. That's what he tried. He just didn't get the good grab on the cue ball. Nice, smooth combination. That was good. Hit it on a good side, get the cue ball down. I think you just draw this back, try to go maybe two rails. Yeah, just like that. Mm -hmm. Or four or five if you're Jamie Dyer. Yeah, a little hard. A little <laughs> hard. I like the English caught pretty good on the rail that time, too. Oh, I thought that was going to clip the nine go in. So it's in for a second, too. It's going to make two rails. Line up nicely for Jamie here. If Jamie uh, can get a nice remaining balls in order here. Yeah, I think Benny is just very frustrated. He hit that ball like he's very frustrated. And he got the results. That's not going to help. Oh, yeah. They miss, but he's scratched. You just got to remind yourself, like, hey, man, I'm not out of this yet. I mean, you can be on your last leg and still come back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then poker players say, a chip in the chair. Chip in the chair. You know? That's good shape right there for Jamie. I think it's smart. Now you just got to make sure you don't get behind the nine ball in this. I think it's you don't want to really hit the eight. No. Nope. The eight. You end up hitting the eight, you gotta... You got away with it. Came out okay. I think I agree here. It's kind of rough because you gotta kind of avoid the six ball. Oh, he avoided it. But he is going to attempt the eight ball. No, so it goes inside, far. though. Which is funny because I would have thought he would have gone past the eight the way he's been playing. Got him back for the seven. Oh, he he's ran into the seven. seven. We're going to have bump shape for this whole rack. You want to guess uh, how they're going to play shape on this one? Because I got three in a row. Guessing he's going to roll it up a little bit. No, actually, he's going to roll up for the side. Are you sure he's not going to go three rows? I think he's going to the side. Well, he rolled it up for the side. He just yeah. missed the ball by it quite a bit. All right. This is the time when Jamie can say, okay. The Shark Stream fan yeah. club right. liked the stream. Thank you, Shark Stream fan club. Appreciate it. Then he can. That's that looks like a design safe. That was good. Maybe I, that's good though. Like I, I like that. It, that means that yeah, he's thinking long term right now. Yeah, it came out a little far. Looks like it leaked out. Eight, so he's got to cut the sock, cut the corner. Let's go up and down with the cue ball. Got it. Good shape too. It's yeah, it's just, perfect. It's just it's top shot this way. Slide this down over a little bit at a small angle. Jamie capitalizes one more time. Over to 23. It happens sometimes, though. Yeah, you know, we've seen it a few times where we're like, it'll be a good match. Yeah, that's kind of a shame, but. Yeah, cause they were, I mean, uh, they were really close last time. I guess this is Jamie's payback. Yeah. Jamie came, Jamie came in with a, with a sense of purpose. <laughs> What do you guys think? Was this sort of uh, what you guys were thinking was going to happen? Kind of. Uh, how did you guys feel about when he came into this game?
Me up, it's like, nah, Jamie, we, we're just going to get it done. Let's go. That's cool. What are we playing after this? Like they, may, they may have a, a rematch. Monopoly? They may have an unofficial rematch coming up. Oh, they might. Might just throw the stream on and let it go. Exactly. We're going to head up to Cherokee, I guess. Yep, yeah, we'll leave the stream on for you guys. Play some blackjacks, slots, traps. All within the. There was actually a casino I passed in Alabama that I never realized was there. On the way home the other day. Really? Yeah. It's called like Lucky Sevens Casino. Okay. Never even knew a casino was in Alabama. I wonder if it's really a casino. I think I know the one you're talking about. I think I remember seeing it too, if it's what I'm thinking of. I think I wrote by it and it was like just about empty. Was it? A few cards were around. Yeah. It's not bad there you So. Safety? Safety. You got safes behind the six. Of course, he's liable to take this ball in the corner. <laughs> well, we've seen that happen a couple times today. Actually, he shoots straight at it. I guess he can see it. Oh, shit, he can see it. Not only he can see it, but he actually undercut the ball. He could have hit it a little bit thinner and made it. It's really hard to tell on the camera sometimes. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah, the overhead's to always tough to tell angles. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a good way of sourcing the layout of the balls, but. Adjustment there at the end. That's a good shot, though. Yeah. Jamie's definitely, or uh, Benny's definitely playing. I'm sorry, yeah, Benny made the adjustment. Yeah. I don't know, our camera's not liking us too much right now. Yeah, the overheads get a little funky. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, there's a foul because uh ball hit another ball, impeding it. He contacted the ball, which another ball, so that's a foul which gives a very basic three ball out which in true Jamie fashion, the size overhead the ball a little bit. Yeah, he can run into the nine here. Hopefully, get shape. So uh, I think he's missing a nine. I think he might just go. He's just gonna go around the world a little bit. Go three rails back down. Go four rails. I'm, I'm counting four rails here. Oh, unless he's back cutting it. Mm. Got to be four rails, five rails. He's or oh, you missed it. Yeah, he completely missed it. Yeah, I think you have to go for the other pocket. I think that's just too much of a cut. It almost looked like he missed it by like a half a ball. Mm, I went that much. Overhead is a little tough to see uh, stuff like that. But yeah, I think he had to go to the other pocket though. Jamie gave it to him. By the way, for all you guys who are thinking I use gay ball in hand on the seven, I'll just concede no. Don't concede. There's no reason. Things happen. People mess up, so. No we quit. have some pretty high level players that won't concede at all, even if it's a nine ball with ball. Oh, yeah. I don't know why people do concede. I mean, I. We've seen Alex Pagulan miss a straight in nine ball. Oh, absolutely. Side pocket. Yeah, just fight till the better end. No way. He closed the gap to seven, now it's back to ten. Yep. Well, was it eleven? No, it was. Really trying to crush it. Let's 
Let's go back to our earlier conversation for a second, though. Whoa. Whoa. That was a good shot. Yeah, nice little back what do you think about Mike Siegel being the coach for the Mass County? <laughs> I don't. I really don't have a big opinion either way right now. I don't know. I mean, it's one of those things. You gotta wait and see what he does. You know. How long has Jeremy Jones been the coach for the Mass County? He's been the coach for like fifteen years. No, no. he's been the coach for a long time. I mean, went for fifteen straight years now. I know. I know. Mark Wilson was coach for a little bit. Oh, Mark was. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, he was a captain. How did Mark do? Uh, I think they did okay. Not great. I think he got kind of frustrated on the uh, sort of the work ethics of the of the players. Did he? Now he was trying to get them to do certain things, like really focus on the breaks, especially lagging. There's an interesting stat. I forgot what the number is. I want to say like 58% of the people that win the lag win the match, which may not that's sound That's a pretty like, big high percentage. That's a big percentage. That's, that's enough to make sure you say, hey, maybe I need to practice my lags and get that first break. Oh, yeah. The break's big, It might too. be 56 or 58, something like that. But it's it's one of those numbers that if you don't really think about it, you think, ah, it's, it's pretty close to 50-50. It's like, no, that's a No, that's a that's big difference. If, it, like, if you gamble 50 versus 58%, it's a huge difference. It's a huge difference. Welcome to the comedy stylings of Alex Westerland. No, she did. What do you say? Why not, Earl? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm actually with Alex. I see, let, let's let Earl be the captain for a little bit. Just have one camera on him the whole time. Oh We're going to pay a cameraman to be on him the whole time. Uh, you know, you're going to put him on a separate live stream from the actual West County? We're going to. Just going to. The mini. The, we'll have it called the mini faces of Earl. It's just going to be. Uh, That's a good shot. Entertainment. You people. <laughs> Production team. Uh -huh. <laughs> Misreading some things. <laughs> kind of hang. What kind of people does the uh, production team hang out with? It. It's ankle monitors. Oh, Jerry, quit ruining our fun. Did he still wear his wrist, wrist weights? Uh, I guess he really wasn't wearing anything at the last Mass County. That would be kind of entertaining him as a coach. Though. He'd probably be yelling at everybody the whole time. <laughs> Who are the top players in the U.S. right now? I go with Shane. Well, yeah. Fedor, if you want to still... You consider him part of the U.S.? He's part of the U.S. right now. He has a little county. Fedor, Dane. The Bats. I tell you, he's been playing really well, but more gambling than tournament. But really, but John Moore has been playing really well lately. Has he? Yeah. He's been playing well. Where'd your, uh, where'd your list go? What was it coming up? Oh, bringing it up on my phone. Hey, I went up at Fargo Ray. Okay, oh, yeah, went down a farther rate. Yeah, Fedor is above Shane right now by a lot, actually. Well, yeah, Fedor plays better than Shane. All right. Sorry for your Shane lovers. Sky, see, Michael to Shane is still up there. Sky wasn't even at the last Moscone, was he? Yeah, he was. Was he? Thought he was. Josh Roberts is actually on there in the top six. That actually kind of surprised me a little bit. Oh. Yeah. Josh plays good. Josh plays damn good. I think he only charges like, uh, I want to say like $200 for like three hours of lessons, too. Oh. Yeah, it's not a super low. 
But I don't know. Wait. Hey, Oscar Dominguez is actually a pretty far up there, too. There's Tony at number nine. And Corey Duell with the 777. For some reason, I feel like Corey Duell did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Probably is like a, an odd test case. Like he likes to experiment. Well, he does. I like that. Yeah, he's a great player. He just his his results sometimes may be muddled. I don't. I don't think he really like has to worry about like money as much as a lot of other players though from what I heard. Like I heard that he was more like a, like he was born with a little bit more money than the average individual. Maybe. Yeah, how Benny handles this ball in hand situation comes a little higher than he wanted to be. So he's gonna make up for it by coming around. Oh uh, nice has little a tap. Shape. Yeah, little tap. Shape rubbing, it rubbing that five ball a little bit. He rubbed it good too, he didn't rub it the wrong way. It's kind of interesting. A little short. Well, I mean, it's still fine. You can play up top, like a brown, didn't it? Get on the high side. Him Oaks. Get on the top side of the ball. Hi, Kim. How are oh, you? play safe, really? That surprised me. Ah, that's smart. I think that's the way to go. You got three balls left on the table. Well, I don't know. If you can make the cut, I think, on that one, it might be worth making the cut. Yeah, I mean, I thought if you cut it in, it's going to go sail down table and you'd have a nice little shot on the side. You know, uh, probably. But the way the thing's been going for Jamie, I mean, i say he doesn't make this ball somewhere. And for everybody in the chat, Kim puts on a lot of tournaments, so if you are looking for tournaments, that's the person to hit up. Oh, he almost. Right, and I told you the way Jamie's day has been going. He's had a few of those today. He's been playing well, and he's gotten a few good rolls. Yeah, they rolls. Uh, a little tougher shot here, though. Didn't look he like it, it, though. He got he it. Made it look easy. Still caught nines. Because that ball, that's going to put Jamie on the hill. Ten points up again. Yep, ten games. To 24. So, I don't want to say it's over, Benny, but now would be a good time to get it going. Robert says hello as well. Hello, Robert. It's good seeing Robert. Got any good tournaments coming up, Kim? I see you posting them on the line. Oh, bring the, uh, the points to see what's happened. There's any major upsets. Oh, no, there's no more until tomorrow. No, what? No, there's today. No, there's none left today. They're all done for today. Yes, they are. It has a time on the bracket. Oh, wait. Never mind the airplane. What the heck? It said that the next one was at the 13th. There's a loser bracket. There's a loser, the loser bracket. Right? I don't know how to read. Jeez. Read brackets. They were all at zero a second ago, so they must have just started a little bit ago. Alice Rice, or Ashley Rice. I thought her Fargo rate was higher than that. No, she's a good player. She is a really I good player. I mean, it's a five player, but yeah. Monica Webb is up four to three against Shanna Lewis. I say Shanna's doing pretty good as a five thirty eight to be keeping up with Monica. Like is that, that the only matches going on? They should, they should be. Nah, these are all these matches. Yeah, there should be more. Uh, that's it. So six. Six. Yeah. Hmm. Nicole Kinney is down. Seven forty-two Fargo. That is so, and he comes close to scrapping, but that's a quiet. that's a heck of a Fargo raid. Right?
on the phone. Yeah. See if there's anything exciting. Um, Kelly Fisher beat April Larson earlier. Mm -hmm. Four. Go ahead, Mason Parker. Last from the past, she's playing really well. She's really found her game again. Who is it? Um, Joanne Mason Parker. Who's that? She was really big in the 90s. I don't care. Yeah. yeah. I think she's in Florida now. She was from New York, if I remember right. Um, Pia went double hill. Pia Filler went double hill and beat Janet, uh, Jeanette Atwell. Jenna Atwell. Well, that's pretty good. What's P.I.? 688. 688. That's still high. It's like, yeah. And Pia had to qualify through the first stage once. You didn't get an invite into the second stage, so she had to qualify. But she, she handled business pretty well. Kelly Fisher is going to play against Joanne Mason tomorrow. Oh, we got a little that's Benny the, combination working That's the here. lady you were talking about, right? Yeah. Benny's got a combination on the nine. It's jacked up a little bit. Dig him down. And that is... Oh, that's going to hang. Oh, no oh. hang. But it's that's got a seven thing. ball that's uh, looking pretty yeah. tasty. Actually, you might be... He might be, yeah, yeah, he might be tempted yeah. to play the... I think I would do the nine. Yeah, he's leaving. Yeah. Game. That's a game ender if he mm -hmm. makes it. That'd be a good way to go out, that's for sure. And Savannah's got to play Fedor's girlfriend, Christina. Oh, he misses a seven, so he's going to give back that opportunity. Yes. We actually may see a run out to the seven. Do you like the run out here, or do you like to just uh, bank do? the two ball no. into the seven right here? No, you do the two <laughs> the seven. Asking for, asking for trouble. Eh, trouble's my middle name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, loser bracket round is going on. I think they only have eight tables to deal with. To work with. Oh, oh what a cool. Actually, double kissed and made it. I think slightly worse than it was. Looks like it might be I think a it, little bit. It, it looks like goes. it's more touching now. Yeah, it goes, but you get it's a little bit touchier shot now. Oh, actually, I like the idea of playing all. I like it right here. But you're I think gonna this, play the combination. Play the combo right here. Well, maybe because you, that doesn't go. That's gonna hang. That's gonna be deep in the pocket hanging if you don't make this. Oh no, he played. Wow, I thought he played off the nine to break it up. So just to let you guys know, our overhead camera is having some issues, so I'm moving it off for it. So you got to deal with just our faces and the side. Oh, this will be an interesting classic match of juniors coming up in Birmingham. You have uh, April Larson is going to be playing against Sophia Mast. Who's Sophia Mast? She is from Florida. She is, I think, 16. Okay. 16, no. yeah. April's like in her 20s, though, right? No. There goes Nimble. That's it. That's going to wrap it up, folks. Well. 14-25. Yeah. It's a pretty big split. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, Jamie Jamie got some good roles. He played well. Benny had some issues. Those not some games. But, I mean, that's, that's full. I mean, next time they play, when they come back next year, I can be going the opposite again. But he might run off with that one. So Benny played pretty good though overall though. You know, mm -hmm. he made some good shot decisions. He just seemed like he was missing up like towards the end of the uh, quite a few reacts. Yeah. Alright, folks. Well, I appreciate you guys hanging out watching. Yep, thanks for hanging out with us. My name is John. This is Michael. Uh we are a road player. If anybody wants to donate to the stream, feel free to uh donate some stars. If you like the channel, please subscribe. It helps us more than anything. The best thing you can do for us is just hit the like button or hit subscribe. Uh, until next time. Later, guys. Bye, everybody.